and I hope you're all having a fantastic day. Uh, we've got an extremely special guest for you today that I'm so, so excited to be able to introduce. It's Mark I. Anson. Now, Mark is a hugely successful property investment trader, and he is the author of Dominate Your Ground, which details highly innovative techniques, techniques all designed to dramatically improve your wealth. Mark was invited to speak at over 60 property networking events in 2012 and, one is, the, and is one of the most sought after experts in the industry. He is also an enthusiastic and inspiring mentor and teacher, helping countless of people uh, to achieve their own financial goals and providing them with the tools and know-how to go on and make their own property millions. So it is my absolute pleasure to be able to introduce Mark onto this webinar. Thanks so much for being here, Mark. Hi, Duncan, and hi, everybody, and thanks for coming. Brilliant. Thanks for having me here. Do you want to jump straight in? Yeah, sure, yeah. Um, so welcome to the web webinar. I've, I've called this webinar um, Dominate Your Ground because it's part of the Dominate Your Ground series, and, and this particular one is Vendor Conversion Intensive, which is about uh, doing deals and, uh, and trading them for cash because I actually don't like property. Um, I actually fell in love with the cash, so that's what it's all about. It's about making money. So... Um, if you've got any questions, by all means, type them in the box and um, we'll go through them uh, throughout the webinar and stuff. I don't mind being interrupted um, and Duncan will s sort of chip in and interrupt me if it's relevant and uh, I'll try and answer it. And then at the end, um, I'll stay on for, um, you know, well, however long it takes with, with the questions and answer as many as I can. So I hope we're all relaxed and um, let's crack on with the webinar. So... Just for those that don't know me, um, my name is Mark Hinton. As Duncan said, I wrote a book called Dominate a Ground, which is on um, Amazon, and it's a number one bestseller on Amazon. Uh, and it's it's a, it's in a niche area of getting deals or getting leads, sorry, turning leads into deals and then trading them out to uh, for profit. So, so that's what the book's about. And uh, as a freebie gift um, to you guys for coming on, because I like action takers, and you could have been doing anything tonight. So I'm glad you're on here. Um, I'm, Duncan's going to send you out the High Flyers Guide to Leafleting, which is um, an ebook all based on one strategy, which is leafleting for leads in an area. And it's it's um it's a kind of how-to book, um just about how I do it and um you know how to leaflet and get leads. So a couple of things on there. I work for various organisations, Progressive Property. I teach on a few of their courses, and um, I'm a, a mentor for their VIP clients. And they invited me to the Cayman Islands this year. Um, to mentor six of their, or seven in fact, one was a couple of their kind of high-profile clients. So um, I, I've worked with them for just over three years now, and I also work with PIN and Property Investor Academy, and I write articles for various magazines that are kind of on there. So that's a little bit about me, and um, I've actually done, in fact, this slide shows, I've actually done 159 traded deals in the last 18 months. Uh, and these are all my individual brochures. All them blue things are all um, sort of eight or nine page brochures on individual properties. And I leave them live on a, on a website so a potential client can go and have a peruse through them and have a look before they do any business with us and, and, and buy deals off us. So, so that's um, 159 deals in 18 months. And 74,000 people have downloaded my brochures. Um, so I've got a, a, a good old database that I've built up over a few years. Um, and in 2012... There were 76,140 buy-to-let mortgages issued, so it's kind of I would think it's fair to say that I've got a fairly good chunk of the deal buying public on my database. Um, I must admit I can't find that last 2,000. I think they must be hiding somewhere, but I'll, I'll get them. So that's um, how I do stuff. Well, you might think, what? <clears throat> why does this matter to me? Well, trading deals is brilliant cash flow, and it, you can trade the deals you don't even want. Now you, you might be thinking, well. Um, if I come across a deal and it's a great deal, I'm going to keep it. But we don't keep them all because we can't buy everything. That's the first point. And the second point is it, it might not be as good a deal as you can get. So you might be looking at maybe 30% BMV or, or you might be looking at great cash flow in lease options or HMOs or something. And you might come across a vendor with um, a flat which you don't buy or you know, a one bed or a studio or something. It's still a great deal, but you just, just don't want to add it to the portfolio. Well, they can be traded out to other investors that do buy stuff like that. And I charge anywhere from two grand to ten grand per deal, um, so so it's brilliant cash flow. It, it, I mean, you can use a cash flow for whatever you like, but when I started, I started to build up the war chest um, and, and and to get more property. So deposits or building the war chest, um, and trading deals is something we all do. We either start doing it to build up the the deposit pot, 
or we, we do it because it's great cash flow. Um, but we're already doing half of it anyway, because if, you, if you're on the ground looking for properties or looking for deals, you're already doing half the work. So um, it's, it makes sense to monetize, the, you know, do a bit more and monetize the, the, the whole of it, you know. Um, I secure deals without the estate agent because we've all had deals fall over and the middleman or the estate agent is one of those guys, is that domino in the middle of a, um, a, a row of dominoes that could fall over and topple the rest of the deal over. So I actually do my deals direct to vendor. And I'll show you how I do it later on in the webinar. So um, mine are all direct to vendor so that the deal has got a better chance of going through because there's one less relationship to manage during the process. So that's why I do them direct. Um, and I'll show you this model um, which is the pre-made model. And a, a pre-made scenario, scenario makes a ready-made deal. That's kind of my little tagline for, for the pre-made model. It's just a model to d demonstrate the, the, the eight different scenarios that people get themselves into that you can get them out of to make money for yourself. Did that make sense? I hope that made Yeah, I think it did. Um, so these are the eight scenarios. I'll go through them in a second so you know exactly what they are. Um, and of course, trading deals. If, you, if you're right at the beginning of the journey, um, trading deals are a brilliant way to build up a deposit pot or a, or a war chest, as I've said, because there's no credit checks, no mortgage applications, and there's no deposits needed. So you don't have to have the money to start with to buy a property. What we do when we trade is we secure the deal on a contract and then trade it out for cash. So you don't have to uh, apply for mortgage, you don't have to buy the house, you don't have to come up with the deposits. That, so that Lots of people ask me at networking meetings, uh, I'd like to get into property but I haven't got any money. Well, trading deals is how we all started. Um, uh, well, how m most of us started uh, that didn't have any money when we started. And I'll show you, I'll tell you my story later on. Um, and I'm originally from Yorkshire, so I call this the fast track to cash in till. And the reason for that is because it, it's the fastest way uh, to make money in property, um, make nice you know, chunks of cash in property, uh, depending on what type of deal you are, you, you're doing and what type of area you're in and sort of what type of vendors you like working with. But it is the fast track to cash in till. Now, what I thought I'd do on this webinar is take you, the, 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 you guys from the point where we've got a lead. And uh, uh, this webinar is not about leads, but the, the, there's bags of ways to get them. These are some of my guys on, on the ground. And um, there's lots of ways to get leads. If you've got no money, it'll cost in, in uh, shoe leather and a, and a bit of imagination. But if you've got some money, you can plow straight into advertising and stuff. And you've got uh, a big pot to start with. Um, you can go straight for the <clears throat> the big guns, the, you know, the newspapers and the trucks and stuff. But there's all there's hundreds of different ways of getting leads. Um, so I thought I'd take us from that point where we've got a lead already. And, and a lead is um, the name, the address, and the telephone number of someone that wants to get out of a property. Now, when they when they start at this point, they always, or the majority of them say, um, my house is worth a hundred thousand. I want a hundred thousand. They never say, I'm going to do a deal on the house and give you give you it cheap. They never say that. We've got to work with the lead and nurture it to get them uh, to get the right deal. So that's a lead, name, address, and telephone number. And I'm going to take us from that point during the next sort of um, you know 45 minutes, hour or so. So I mentioned earlier the pre-made model, and this is on the first phone call. Um, if I can get it, I want to know what scenario they're in. And the reason for that is because the, I, there's eight different scenarios. Um, and this is a model just for teaching, so everyone remembers it. Um, so it's, there's eight different scenarios, and then I use four different types of deal to get them out of their situation. So the pre-made um, is, an, is an anagram. For, uh, anagram? What's it called? It's not called anagram at all. Now oh, the word's gone for me. Anyway, so a model, and then I use four different types of deal. And, and the, the types of deal are um, a lease option, a, an EDC, an exchange with a delayed completion, a assisted sale, or a BMV offer, which just means a low offer. So they're the four types of deal I do, um, in, and the different ones suit different types of scenarios. So let's go through the pre-made model just so it's clear. The P stands for probate, uh, so probate cases. Um, the, there's three stages, or three different stages of probate. And in fact, I'll just turn that speaker off. That's just blowing. Just turn that speaker down a second so it doesn't interrupt you again. So there's three different stages. There's pre-probate, where someone's sorting out their lives. Uh, there's in-probate, where it's with the solicitor. And then there's post-probate, where it's been left um, to a family or you know a, a sibling or something. Um, and then th there's different ways of dealing with each of the three scenarios. So uh, that's probate cases. The second, uh, the R stands for repossessions. 
and again there's there's um, a, a couple of different scenarios to do with repossessions if you want to find your uh, spend your time in court um, you can save lots of houses and get deals out of that and keep people from getting massive bad you know really bad credit ratings and stuff um, I've done a few of those and uh, they're quite good cases to work and then the second R in pre-made is refurbs or ugly houses um, and that's forcing value with houses uh, again you don't necessarily need to buy the property to do it um, you can c uh, control it on contract and then do the work and, and force the value and make money and then the, the, the E stands for equity or lack of equity um, there's not so many of those now because we're in a bit of a rising market at the moment um, so that, that they're few and far between at the moment but the ones that where the debt equals the value of the house or even over you can still do deals with it. it's not always about the discount because the skill in trading is spotting or recognizing where the money is in the deal pulling it out along the way it passes through you um, and paying yourself and that's kind of the skill so it's not always about discount and lots of people say oh there's no BMV where I am I'm, I live in a posh area um, there might be no BMV but there will be deals I can promise you there are deals and, and I've said this a few times in the last few weeks that if I'd, I, I'm kind of entrenched in Northamptonshire and I, I'd work a bit of Warwickshire um, but if I had my time again uh, I'd move straight to London and do it in London uh, I really would because it's um, it, uh, it's a perfect time at the moment for uh, doing deals in London okay <clears throat> moving on the M stands for migration and these are quite often um, uh, middle managers moving for promotion or you know a job move and it, they're, they're brilliant to work with because they're generally reasonably educated people it's not a financial uh, motivation for, for the sale of the house it's more that um, more of urgency um, and, and getting settled in the new place so they're quite good cases to work as well I quite enjoy them um, I've got a guy up in in the Northwest that just works with footballers and he lives in a house that's I mean it must be worth a, a million a million and, and a bit now um, but he lives in that on a lease option because there's no reason why you can't secure a place to live in that's better than the one you've got if you if you know how to do the deal so he kind of um, he does deals on, on big properties so the A stands for arrears and that may, might mean uh, mortgage arrears or it might mean uh, debts uh, as in credit cards or store cards or um, uh, home improvement loans or car loans um, anything that adds up and is causing a family grief and the, the debt collection agencies uh, we've run rings around them for years um, that they they can call legally they can call once every 24 hours on the home phone the mobile the work phone and so they can put an enormous amount of stress onto a family uh, that are trying to make ends meet you know make ends meet and stuff so um, arrears cases that they're quite emotional cases but they're good to work and um, because you can generally do deals and help someone out of a, um, a pressurized situation and, and take that pressure away so um, and I've got to be really clear here we can't be seen to be give uh, to give financial advice because we'll get our collar felt by the FCA if we do that. Um, but there's special ways to do it and companies to use that we can we can help them out and um, you know get them out and do a deal and pay ourselves too. Um, okay, the D stands for downsizing, and again I've got another guy in. Uh, I, I do a few downsizes, but I've got a guy in the northwest again who does. Uh, he just targets the the, the early retire uh, early retirers, and he, he's based in Liverpool. And um, in Liverpool, people uh, lots of people like to move to Southport because it's a nice place to live and you know it's kind of by the sea and stuff and it's, it's just a pleasant place for um, for retirees so what he does he targets the retirees in Liverpool that want to move to Southport he doesn't charge them anything because he doesn't need to but he has permission to make a profit out of the equity they've got and usually the, the early retirees have got uh, they've had the house for 30 years they've either got no mortgage or they've got a very small mortgage so they can take a bit bit of equity out of out of the um, out of the property to pay him and he moves them on and looks after the whole process so he arranges the viewings he goes around and accompanies them on viewings there's, there's no selling involved because they can choose their own house whichever where they want to live um, and he uses agents in, in Southport in the area on the ground to um, to find him property so he's got all these people around him that are doing work with him and, and also getting paid and everyone loves him during the process because the, the vendors love him because he becomes a, you know he sees him quite a bit during the process so that it's hard not to become friends and the agents love him because they get two sales out of it. The, law, the lawyers love him, and, and so it's just a really nice way to make a living. So, so um, downsize is a great way. And if you if you're somewhere, this works especially if you're somewhere um, uh, not close to the sea, but if you if you're within the vicinity of the retirement, so Bournemouth, Brighton, um, you know, all the all the east coast, uh, the southern, you know, the Anglian east coast, uh, lots and lots of the lots of the Welsh coast, um, brilliant strategies for that. 
and the E is actually estrangement, which um, it means divorce. I just couldn't think of a, a word to make the man new. Mnemonic, that's the one. Mnemonic, this pre-med and mnemonic. Um, I just couldn't think of a word so uh, to make up a word. So estrangement just means divorce. These types of cases are, are, are they're quite specialised, really. You, you, we normally see the um, family separate because they're arguing and fighting. You know, they don't want to be together anymore. So uh, we see them separately, and we do a deal between them to get them out of a situation. And it's it, you've got to be really soft and gentle with these guys um, to get them out. But they do appreciate it. And again, it's hard not to make friends with them because the you know you deal with them a bit and and do a deal for them and get them out of a situation that they've got themselves into. So so that they're the kind of eight scenarios that people will get out of a house quick. And, and you could say, well, why, why don't they just go to an estate agent? Well, it's weird because I, before I started doing this, I've, I've been trading deals since uh, just after the, the turn of the century, which sounds makes sound really old, but um, it's only, what, 14 years. So the, the it's weird. When someone's in debt, they put their head in the sound sand and they don't want to go to an estate agent because they don't want to admit the debt but they don't mind calling an anonymous person that's shoved a leaflet to the door or put an advert in the paper and talking to someone that's totally anonymous and not really a business so on the ground I'm not really a, um, an entity, I'm not trying to be Tesco I'm not trying to brand the air or anything it's just Mark who does deals on the ground um, so, so there's might be kind of embarrassed, especially in arrears cases in uh, downsizers they don't Sometimes they don't like estate agents because they've grown up not liking estate agents, and they've been tainted by maybe a um, you know maybe not not a very good one. They don't, sometimes don't want people traipsing through their house doing viewings and stuff. So there's lots of reasons why people won't go to an estate agent, um, and all you've got to do is find out who they are and find out what situation they're in. So that's the the pre-made model. And when I've got the situation, um, and I use a special script um, when I contact them to start with. And, and we go round, uh, you know, we go around the house uh, verbally and stuff, and, and and chat to them a little bit to build a little bit of rapport. And then I use what's called my maps process, and uh, I'll show you. I'll show you it. This is a maps process, um, or this is the the simplified version. It's meet and greet, answers, presentation, signature, and there's a little red line in there called critical time, which I'll speak on in a second. But the first step when we're, we're in a house with a vendor is, is the meet and greet and I say the same thing every, every time, I've said it over 600 times now is at this point Mr and Mrs Vendor I've got no idea if we can do a deal or not but what I'd like to do is ask you a few questions about your situation, your circumstances and your property first, would that be okay? Now nobody ever says no and, and because I've asked permission to ask the questions, I can ask as many as I, as I like. And I, I, you may have, you guys may have seen my um, ebook out there. It's um, called Ultimate Mo Motivated Seller Questions. And that that book came from uh, lots of groups and workshops, and I've had um, nearly six, seven hundred people on, through my courses now. So that that came from a, a load of delegates or students working through questions that could ask vendors in, di in, in different parts of the pre-made model coming up with them so they don't dry up. So now we've got um, the Ultimate Motivated Seller Questions ebook is, is has got around 300 questions in it now, um, or 3, 350 even. Um, and it just stops you uh, kind of drying up in, in the house, you know. So each section has got its own set of questions, or each scenario, sorry. And <clears throat> I've got a golden rule, and the golden rule is we can't talk numbers for 40 minutes when we're in a house and the reason for that is, is some people get stuck on the value of the property against the, the sale price and I'm going to give you an example we've got dad who's who says my house is worth 100 I want 100 and even when you point it out to him that he's getting repossessed tomorrow and he'll lose the lot he still wants 100 for it and sometimes it's really hard to break that break that kind of thinking because they don't think creatively sometimes and it's up to us to use our skill knowledge of the market professionalism all that sort of stuff to 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 kind of sell it in so the answers part is the, easily the most important part of the process um easily the most part and that's why I spend so long on it it's about 50 minute, uh, 40 minutes just probing and seeing what uh, uh, you know what uh, what the situation is and, and and I call it digging into the ribs um so it's um, yeah a nice 40-minute process, nice and gentle. And up to that point, there's no pressure because all I'm doing is asking questions. And if I get invited to look around the house during then, uh, then I will do. 
and I've got a, a special form that I've got that I take around with me as well, you know, an inspection form, so I can note down any defects in the property or any improvement works or remedial works that need doing. And after we've done that and asked our, our, our questions and got our answers, then comes critical time. Now, if you've never been in a vendor house before and it's your first time, but you've got to this stage, this is the time to split the meeting up in two. And if you've meeting and agreed properly and you've got a motivated seller and the numbers look okay and we've asked all the questions that we can and we've discovered that there could be a deal here but you don't want to actually present a deal then if you get out of the house then leave make your excuses and you know politely leave arrange for a meeting the following day or the in the next couple of days if you get out at that red line and give me a call I can make you 40 grand uh, and the reason is there's it, and, and you don't have to do it with me too. That anybody that's uh, that does uh, direct to vendor deals is chat it through with somebody else first to come up with a, the scenario because two brains are better than one. Chat it through, get your deal down on paper, go back in, and do the presentation. Because if you if you roll on through to presentation um, in one meeting, I mean I I do do it, but I've done a lot of them. So, but if you if you roll on, sometimes you can get a bit tongue twisted and drop into a haggle. And if you drop into a haggle, it becomes hostile and you break rapport. So the idea of presentation, which is our third section of maps, is to think of the three best features and benefits of the particular type of deal you're doing, which suit the vendor or suit them. Present them. Don't do any less than three, and don't do any more than three. If you're doing any less than three, it's underselling. If you're doing more than three, it's overselling. And it, it, the, these guys that do canned presentations, um, they, they kind of talk the hand legs off a donkey. It's not about that. It's just presenting the three most relevant uh, features uh, which will benefit the vendor um, the best, you know, with your deal. So the presentation is fairly simple, but come out the house at the, that critical time, have a chat with someone. It can be me if I'm in the office. Give us a ring, and I hope you get back in the house and and do the deal and present it properly. So we present the deal, uh, present it with the, the with clipboard ready, with our uh, our form, our contract on ready for signing, because the next bit is the signature. Now I've put signature on here because it's a you know it's a business model. In real life, I don't use the word signature. I use the word squiggle because it's soft and gentle, um, and it's it's non-threatening. Can I get can I just get a squiggle on here, please? Um, I t in in a vendor's house, I talk mums and dads language um, all the time. I don't mention anything legal. I don't m mention anything financial um, because I'm not an IFA and I'm not um, FCA registered to be. So I'm not giving financial advice. I'm also not a lawyer, so I'm not going to give legal advice because we pay lawyers to do that, and we pay financial advisors to do the, the, the finances, we pay brokers to set people up in mortgages, so there's no need to do um, any of that at all. So w when I'm in the house, it's all fluff, um, all very soft and gentle, and, and it's it's kind of practicing making friends um, in a way because it's soft and gentle, and, and and there's not really there's not really any negotiating to do because I do a uh, when I'm presenting a deal, um, I actually I build my offer from the ground up instead of coming from the top down, and it's a it's a lovely, gentle way of doing it. Because if I was in in my B two B role in my B two B previous life, uh, business to business that is, I'd I'd have to haggle over price with everything that that I was selling. So uh, I'd have to haggle with box quantities and delivery times and price and all this sort of thing, and get more for my uh, you know for my deal. But in a house, it's slightly different because it's not a business sale; it's an emotional sale, and um, with the household, and they're they're not business people. So it's a soft and gentle approach. So, so that's my um, maps model. That's the, uh, the 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 simplified model, just for um, to give you a taste of what I do and and how you can do it too. Because I mean, you can take a screenshot of the model if you if you want to uh, and use that. And I'll I'll know where you are in the house, and you'll be able to describe where you are in the house if we come to do a deal together. So, so that's um, um, my maps model. Um, but what I'd like to I'd, at, at this stage, I'd like to take you back a few years because I haven't always done this. Um, if I take you back to about 1993, um, if it had been with me then, we would have been in one of these, which is a C-130 Hercules aircraft, and it's a, a wonderfully over-engineered over aircraft. Um, you can play football, five-a-side football in the back of it. We put Land Rovers in the back of it and throw them out, um, obviously with parachutes on. Um, it, gorgeously, gorgeous um, military aircraft, a cargo aircraft, and um, with four engines, and it can fly on. A, if three burn out, it can still stay in the air. Uh, it's a lovely aircraft. Um, but I had to do a parachute jump in, in when I was in Northern Ireland in my last year uh, in the army, and I wasn't jumping out of one of these. I was jumping out of a Cessna, and this particular plane 
this particular session. It was a bit of a dog, if I'm honest. But anyway, I got out of it, and the parachute didn't open properly, and I hit the ground at thir just over 30 miles an hour, which is a, um, a well, which is pretty tough because the Earth's a hard old rock when it's just you and you and it. So um, I smashed up all my legs and got taken to hospital and spent the next, uh, well, it was about three to four weeks in traction, and then it was um, in a wheelchair for a few weeks, and then it was on crutches for a few months. And if you if you jump out of airplanes and you bash your legs up um, quite seriously, you can't really be a soldier, um, because soldiers run about a lot, and if you can't run, you can't be one. So, so I had to get out of the army, um, and I got into Civvy Street. And when I got into Civvy Street, I found it incredibly tough to get a job. Um, incredibly tough. I might have a slide here. All yeah, right. I'm presuming you guys, some of you guys on the, on this webinar remember these cars, um, the MG Maestro. Well, when I got out into Civvy Street, I had £2,600 to my name. And I, I got myself into a room, so I, so I had somewhere to live. Um, I'd been away 12 years because I served all of the you know, all of the world, so I'd been away 12 years. And all of my mates and buddies and stuff from home had all kind of moved away. And I had a, had a bit of family up in the northeast, which is where I'm from, but not a lot. So I didn't have that support network around me at the time. And when I got out, I thought, I'll, 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 you know, I've got to get a job, somewhere to live and get transport. Now, I, this was a brochure shot. I'll show you what mine looked like. This was mine. £900. Um, so that was a £900 spent, and it was an old dog that I bought, this uh, maestro. And it... I went on all these interviews, but if, if you're injured and people can, can tell you're injured, it's hard to get a job. I promise you, um, it, it's it's not impossible. I went on at least 40 interviews, and I didn't have a lot of kind of civvy street savvy at the time. And I certainly didn't have any inter, inter, uh, interview savvy, so I just kept getting turned down for these jobs time after time. And finally, the company that took me on was QuickFit, fixing tires and exhaust. So if you can imagine, I'm fixing tires and exhaust in a QuickFit, Driving a, an old dog, living in one room. Um, it, I didn't know it was called a HMO back then, but it was it was a HMO. Um, living in one room, my rent was sixty quid a week, uh, and I did this for three or four months. Um, kept going on interviews and getting turned down. And I, my head wasn't in the right place uh, at all. And it was, I, I don't know, you, the cogs don't fall into place along the journey, along your property journey. And the reason I'm telling you this is because I'll show you what I did to get out of it. Because I was sat on my um, bed in my one room one night and I thought I was going to go under because um, I was bringing in less than I was spending just going to just driving to work um, and it's all it's an odd feeling because you just wonder when you're going to actually run out and I, I looked at all the newspaper adverts in the back of the newspaper be a window cleaner and you know all these weird jobs and <clears throat> you know it, it was tough absolutely really tough so the company that saved me was Sharp's Bedrooms, and I got a job with them, worked my little cotton socks off, and uh, I sold, I sat in every single house I possibly could, did did every single pitch, I sold a bedroom a, a year, I was with Sharp's Bedrooms, sold, sold um, fitted bedroom furniture, I sold a bedroom a, a day for a year, and made £106,000. And, and so, that, so that was me, so now I thought, well, I'll be a developer, because everybody that buys a dog, um, property and, and renovates it makes money. So I bought this uh, one on the top left. Can I, Duncan? Can I use a pointer here on this thingy? Maybe not. Is Duncan gone? Okay. Yeah, you, know, you can. You can use a pointer. Can I? Um, no, can you hear me? It. Yeah, I can hear. You. Yeah, it doesn't doesn't have the doesn't seem to want to do it. Never we, mind. We, we can see your, we can see your mouse. Oh, okay. All oh, right. Ah, yes. Yeah, so I'll, I'll just use a mouse. Yeah. Okay. So th this. Um, this one, uh, this one up here, is the one I bought first, and it was a, it was a dog, and I did it up, and I thought I'd sell it for loads of profit. Uh, unfortunately, I was the guy that would drive to B and Q every day, um, for a screw, a spanner, um, a pipe cutter, a hacksaw, and when I came to sell it, I couldn't sell it because I had too much in it, so I couldn't reduce the price to get a quick sale. Um, but I was just stuck. So there I was, stuck in this property, which is a four bed, it, it, you know, because because I, I thought I was going to make a fortune on it. Um, and I couldn't get out, so how do you get out of that? Well, I got talking to a developer, um, this is quite a big developer, Barrett, and he said, why don't you swap it for two of ours? And I thought, well, yeah, okay, I'll do that. So I ended up with these two, and this was my second cog, because I didn't want to be a developer, because I didn't do that very well, but my second cog 
was the, the little two bed townhouse um, that cash flowed. It didn't cash flow by an awful lot, but it cash flowed. And I thought, wait a minute, <clears throat> if I can get a few of these, it'd be fantastic. So I lived in that one and I rented that one out to a, a footballer at Darlington Football Club. That cash flowed. And my buddy, Neil, owned this one about three streets away. And he got into trouble with the post office, or he got uh, made redundant from the post office. And the mortgage company were chasing him, and the credit card company were chasing him, all the credit card companies, and the store cards. And we had the chat uh, at the kitchen, his kitchen table, um, a, bit of, a bit of tissues, a few tears. And I thought, I'm going to help him out, out here. I'm not sure exactly what, what I'm going to do, but I'm going to help him out. I started calling the credit cards and calling the banks, and I managed to negotiate the debts down uh, to a manageable level. And, and this was back in uh, 94, so we, we were allowed to do that then, or we could have done it then. Um, and I got rid of the debts, bought the house. I didn't get a discount on it. I didn't even want the discount on it. But I bought the house and let him live there as a tenant. And he, he stayed with me for six years. And we're still friends today. So, um, so that got him, him out of a situation. And I had another property. So my uncle Derek asked me one Christmas, Mark, why, why have you got three properties? I, I, I didn't have an answer because I didn't have a plan. So even if, and this is totally relevant to, to you guys at the beginning of the journey, it's even if you haven't got a plan, do the stuff because you make your plan up as you go along um, because that's what I've done. And a couple of, um, this was about six months later actually, I'd had these, you know, I'd got these sorted and these were rented and stuff. And uh, another another buddy of mine in the state agent said, uh, you're a property guy, Mark, aren't you? I said, um, yeah, I suppose I am. And he said, I've got this great deal for you, which was a HMO and that's this one in uh, the northeast in Stockton. And it's a six bed uh, townhouse, Victorian townhouse. So there's three reception rooms down here. There was four bedrooms on that floor and a bathroom, and then there was two bedrooms in the attic. So we didn't call them HMOs back then. We just called them rooms. And all you did is put an advert in the paper. You got uh, a chap around who, to, uh, which you interviewed to see, see what sort of tenant he was, and you got the rent officer around to uh, to have an argument about the rent, and he won because he did it every day. And he told you what you could charge for rent and who was paying. Um, oh, sorry, how it was paid. And I filled the house up, got eight, eight tenants in the house. And that in 1994, that cash flowed by £750 a month, which is, not well, it's not bad today. It was brilliant then, um, but it's not even bad today. Um, and then with I was still working full-time at this point. I still had a job. And we moved down to the Midlands for a promotion and I discovered these houses. Oh, my point is gone now. I discovered these. Now these houses are, this, that's actually a detached house, that one, it's, there's, there's a gap between these two. But these were in the Midlands and I, we discovered families as tenants and I, and I fell in love with them because the tenants I'd had previously, the HMO tenants, if I'm, if I'm honest, they, they were quite transient, they were, um, uh, they were low demographic tenants, they were kind of, you know, blue collar workers and stuff. But these families were absolutely wonderful tenants, they were brilliant. So we, we went out and bought a few of those and then we discovered <clears throat> two bed Victorian terraces, um, ugly two, bi two bed Victorian terraces, and three beds. This one's actually a three bed. And post grad students as tenants, and they were fabulous because they were even better than the family. So, so we bought a load of them. Um, this, they were now in the Midlands, and we've now got into um, commercial property. We've got ten commercial properties. And what I'd say to anyone is, if you if you're not in commercial yet, then start the relationship with the bank manager now. And the reason for that is. <clears throat> that it might take a year or it might take 18 months to, to, to get it, but it, uh, eventually when the relationship's you know, on, a, on a solid footing, you can go to them with your plan and get finance out of them. It doesn't matter about your income or your job or anything. It's based on the deal. And uh, we've had half a million quid at, at numerous times out of our, our NatWest managers um, for property based solely on the deal. And it's, it's, it's the way to go. And it's a way to develop um, you know, later on in your, in your journey, maybe if, if you're at the start or the, you know, if at the start of it. So go start that relationship now. So, so that's um, what I've done. And in 2010, um, we didn't owe anybody anybody any money, so we thought we'll start spending it, and we went around the world, doing holidays. And uh, this isn't to show off or anything. It's, it's it's actually to describe a point because when we were doing this, we were spending money hand over fist, and we would, I discovered it's just money. And it actually felt a little bit shallow. Um, I'm a, an ex-Northeast tire and exhaust fitter, and I, I didn't quite fit in the the Waikiki surf set. Um, and I didn't. We went to Muscle Beach in Los Angeles, and I didn't, didn't quite fit on there either. Um, so I like being in England. I kind of like being here. And I, 
th this was kind of sh it felt kind of shallow doing this sort of stuff. So uh, what I discovered was I had to get to the next level of uh, fulfillment, if you like, or the, or the next level. And the next level is helping other people um, as opposed to um, just spending money. So, and this isn't isn't a charity pitch. We don't need any money or anything. But we went down to Zambia to a UTH special school, and uh, Mum came with us. Or Mum was a driver behind this one, and uh, my wife comes with me, and my sister's been, and we look after 130 um, children with severe autism um, and learning disabilities. And that's uh, Matthew there, one of my one of my pupils in my maths class. Uh, these are my deaf kids because they, they kind of mix all the disabilities in together over there. They're in separate classrooms, but they're kind of in the same school. Um, and this is Alice. Alice has got cerebral palsy, and she's got um, uh, um, uh, autism, which is unusual for girls, but she's got a double whammy. Um, and everything above her waist doesn't work properly, which is a bit of a shame. That's why she's writing with her feet. But they're the happiest kids in the world. And the mission for us is, is actually, actually very simple. The mission for us is make their lives better. That's, that's the whole mission. As I say, it's not a charity pitch. We don't need any money because when we need stuff, we just buy it. And I, I can only do this because of my property, uh, because my property funds this. And, and that's got me to the next level. And, and you guys on the webinar will choose your own next level, um, but, but choose something to help out other people because this is wealth um, for me. And, and it, you, you guys out there will have different goals, I'm sure, um, but choose one and, and, and go do it and, and make a difference out there. So... So I hope that's um, inspired you to do something. So, um, in fact, I'd ask you to promise yourselves, not promise me, but promise yourselves that you that you you'll make us. In fact, I, if I beg you to promise that you'll make as much money as you humanly possibly can. And and, and the reason for that is that you ca I can't you couldn't get you can't get to the next level if if you don't make loads of money. I, I couldn't do my my work in Zambia um, working at QuickFit. Um, last year we spent over 25 grand in flights alone. Um, a BA are quite nice to us now, obviously, and they allow us free baggage. I think we took 15 suitcases of gear over last time. Uh, sorry, the time before that we went. So um, you've got to make money to do it. So please promise yourselves to make as much money as you can. Anyway, back to the um, back to the vendor's house. If you're lucky enough to own one of these, um, please don't take it to the vendor's house and don't wear your dark suit and your shiny shoes and your white shirt and look all official and stuff and your, and your, your 300 pound briefcase the reason being is that you'll you'll come across it or you'll 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 be seen as the enemy um, when we go to visit a vendor it's an invisible car um, it's 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 casual clothes um, if you if you're a younger guy or a younger person and you're doing with older vendors I wouldn't wear jeans perhaps but but certainly smart casual is the way to go and um, please don't go in a suit because the, if you go in a suit and take the Bentley and um, the line of the thing well, they won't think very highly of you to start with, but they'll, they'll think you're the enemy and they'll clam up straight away. So please don't take the, the nice car. So I thought, I thought I'd go through the paperwork I take in the house for the visit. And the, the paperwork is, is, is kind of vital because it, if you, um, and again, we're going to do a screenshot of this for you so you can, you, can, um, you can save it. If you take the paperwork in, I promise you'll be at least 100% better than the people out there doing it or some of the people out there doing it. Because it'll make it'll give you credibility in the house and make you come across as professional, and that you do this every day. And the first one is um, a property ombudsman certificate, and that just give that just says I do this for a living. Um, I do deals for people, um, and I'm a member of the property ombudsman, which gives you a right to redress um, and use their redress scheme, um, to, you know, to um, if someone complains about you, which they generally don't anyway, but if they did. So to get, I'll show you the steps to get that because it's um, there's a couple of steps to um, to get there. The first piece of paper is an RX1 form, and an RX1 form is a form that's used to secure an interest on a property or a charge on a property. Uh, it's downloadable for free from the land registry. The thing is, I don't actually use this for that purpose. I, I use it because it's got the land registry's logos all over it, and it looks a really official piece of paper. And it just gives credibility in, while it, while he's speaking to someone. So that's the that's all I use the, the form for. But it's it does it is incredibly useful for that. Okay, uh, the next form then is the title deeds. And the title deeds are downloadable from the land registry again, and they're three pounds, sometimes they're four pounds, but they're normally three pounds. And they say a wealth of information. They've got 
the lending bank, they've got the amount they paid, they've got the date, they've got the vendor's full names on and both or all of the vendors that own the property. It's a, it's a load of information and any charges that are, that are already on the property which you have to sort out through the sales. The title deeds are brilliant and, and a lot of vendors don't even know where they are. They think they're in a, some think they're in a, in a, in a big deep vault uh, down under London in the London dungeon somewhere. So um, title deeds are absolutely brilliant and they give you credibility in the house because you know that it's more information than you'd ordinarily have. Uh, comparables, um, I use a, a, a website called Mouse Price, and on the back end of Mouse Price, there's a valuation tool called Calnea, which is C A L N E A, and it costs about 20 quid for a, for a you know desktop valuation. The reason I use Calnea is because um, because there's another one out there called HomeTrack, and HomeTrack is the um, I think that's about 40 pounds a month uh, for HomeTrack. But the reason I don't use that one is because it's actually quite difficult to read for for a layman. Um, because it's a professional tool, and because it's difficult to read, that that you kind of can't get the actual. It's hard to get the actual valuation value of the property um, for a vendor. So, in, in as opposed to that, the mouse price valuation that has um, the, the the actual number, the value in massive, great big letters typed on one of the pages, um, and it's a gorgeous thing to leave on the coffee table if someone thinks the house is worth more than it actually is. Um, you don't have to haggle with them. Um, obviously, you only use it if it works in your favour. Um, don't rely on it as the actual uh, value because it'll be woefully inaccurate because they always are. But if it, the number works in your favour, um, by all means, uh, it's a useful tool um, in the house. And it gives you comparables and um, from the street and from recent sales. It does the work for you, the uh, you know the due diligence for you or part of the due diligence uh, for you. Um, the next thing is the inspection form, which is a, a blank document when, I, when, I, when we walk in, and that's as I said earlier, is to use uh, to go through the defects in the property because you don't, you don't all, if you see a lot of properties, you don't all remember them all. So it's worth noting them down, if, especially if you're trading the deal on, because uh, a new investor or, or client he'll want to know um, if there's any defects before he commits to buy. So incredibly useful to do that, and it does make you look professional when you walk around with the, your, um, your little clipboard and your and your, your inspection form as well. So. Uh, next bit of paper is the option agreement, and the option agreement is a. I, I use a short option or a soft option. That's um, a two-page document, and it pretty much just says, "I'll buy a house for this amount in this amount of time." And it's not to be confused with the lease option. That's a totally different contract. Um, this one's just to secure the house uh, while the sale's going through. So uh, it's normally 12 weeks that I keep the house for while I'm getting the sale through, because um, we sell them quite quickly. Um, but it's just a um, two-page document. You sign it, they sign it, um, and we take it away. So, so that's the option agreement. Uh, data protection license, which is available from the ICO.org. That's the Information Commissioner's Office. And there's no real excuse not to have one because we are collecting people's data, and the licenses are only thirty-five pounds. So there's not really an excuse not to have one, really. And next one is the professional uh, professional indemnity insurance. Again, this isn't expensive. Um, I, I'd advise anyone to go to John Cox, who runs the Books Property Meet. Um, he's, he runs another company uh, that sorts of insurance for landlords um, called Insurance Desk Services. Uh, by all means, um, see him about ins uh, professional indemnity. The reason why you need indemnity is not because anyone's going to sue you because you're not actually taking any money off the vendor. It's so that you can join the property ombudsman, which is right back to the beginning. Um, and They work hand in hand because they'll ask to see uh, some form of professional indemnity. And I think they only require about 100,000 worth of cover. Which is fairly cheap for, uh, you know, it's a fairly low amount for in, uh, indemnity insurance. So that's the 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 paperwork that I take in the house. And the thing is, if I've got all this paperwork in the house, it, it automatically gives you credibility because you look professional because you've got it all. Um, I hope that makes sense because it's it gives you an air of authority uh, while you're in there as well. You know, so it's good. That's the paperwork then. So back to our um, our. Uh, uh, model of maps. What I've done is I've, I've, uh, this is the simplified version. There's the maps plus, which which kind of interlocks um, in all the all the sections to make this this basic maps process will will is the is the order of the meat. But interlocking is little tiny steps to make it professional and make you fly. And, and the reason for that is is once we've got the basics down and we've, we've practiced the basics and we practice these in in safe environments and stuff um, with no vendors present. Once we've got the basics down, we can then get a bit creative and a bit flary. Uh, and create some nice creative deals out of out of um, uh, uh, scenarios that you wouldn't expect. And and some people ask me if if, um, 
what, what if there's competition on my area and we've been na naive to think there wasn't because th th there is always and I've got two competitors in my area on one of my areas but we all do different types of deal and that's the great thing so there's actually no such thing as competition because um, I've got two I won't mention the names because because the, well, I don't know if they'd want me to but two competitors in my area one does um, BMVs on four bed houses um, uh, BMV offers on four bed houses and then HMOs HMOs them, and then the other guy, the other competitor, he does lease options on on big double graded uh, swimming pool type properties, and I trade uh, two bed terraces, three bed terraces, and three bed semis, and that's the the only thing I trade. The 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 thing is, if I go into a if I get a lead from a, a double fronted uh, you know double fronted double gated gravel drive swimming pool house, I'll give it over to one of my competitors because we're actually working together because I'm sure at some point he'll come across a two bed terrace that I want. Um, that he doesn't want anyway, so we pass trades between ourselves. And so there, there isn't actually a, any competition on the area uh, for anyone, uh, really, because you'll start to know who's on the ground, you'll start to work with them and pass each other deals. So the competition um, um, doesn't matter. So th that's Maps uh, Maps Plus is interlocking all of these things, and and these are all of, well some of the people that have been on my courses and I've been on theirs, and um, we kind of work together and 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 trade deals together. Uh, and if someone needs any advice, they've the, got my number. I think we had a deal this morning. Um, a guy's got stuck in a house and he's come out and he's gone back in tomorrow to, to make the deal. So uh, so we all work together and, and do deals and just make money. It's, to, it's, it's the, way to, uh, the way to do it, I think. Oh, quick advert break. Oh, that's all right, Duncan. We've got the works here, which is um, real-life scenarios, about 20 of them. Um, we've got a dongle with all my contract uh, contracts. And if you've been on my website on the online store, you'll see that there's... Um, uh, about 80 odd products, spreadsheets and manuals and documents and contracts and and stuff. Um, they're all I've put them all onto a um, a dongle. And also on the website, we've got Maps Plus on audio, which is about seven hours of audio of an actual workshop uh, taking place, including all the questions and everything that anybody asked about uh, doing deals, um, getting leads and doing deals. And that was also typed up, you know, transcribed, and it's a it's actually become manual a manual for doing deals. So they're all available on the online store. For four hundred and ninety-five pounds um, as a as a package deal, so by all means grab them at the end if you want one. So end of advert. Uh, I thought I'd show you a couple of um, uh, case studies. This particular case study is because um, we'll learn from case studies. So this particular case study is a townhouse in Basildon um, in Essex, and I'm based in Northamptonshire, and that's the reason for selling it because I don't want to manage a property. Uh, two hours away down two of the busiest motorways in, in Europe, then one in the M25. So I, I've got a golden rule, which is uh, I'm vocal about local. So uh, you can find deals where you are, without a doubt, uh, of, of that I've no doubt. So I invest within 30 minutes of my audio deals, within 30 minutes of where I am. Um, so this particular deal was about two hours away. Uh, went to see the vendor. It was a divorce case. <clears throat> and the... Uh, the vendor was, uh, the, the lady, the mum, had moved out and dad was still in there. And uh, emotional case, they were, they were fighting, as you'd expect. They wanted out of the property. They didn't particularly care about the money. It wasn't a money issue for these guys. They, they just wanted it resolving and, and they weren't agreeing with anything. So I met the mum um, first. I met her, her um, alone with, well, she had a, a young daughter, a three-year-old daughter, and I met him afterwards. And, and the thing is, um, this particular house was on the market for two ninety nine and five with an estate agent, but it's a second hand house in a new build area because all the, the development around it was new. So the, the, the developers offering deals like free curtains and um, free lawns, you know, back gardens and stuff, and free white goods and what have you. So they were having a bit of trouble selling it. So it's on the on at two nineteen nine and five. Eventually, the, the bank, the lending bank that we sold it through. Uh, lent it to, uh, valued it at 210, so that's all right. But we're on the money. We picked it up for, or I picked it up for 148, um, 148,000. So a massive chunk of equity um, in that property. Now, the thing was, I could have kept this, um, but again, it, it just breaks the rule and makes my life difficult. So um, I wanted to trade this one on just because it's two hours away. So I traded it on, uh, and I traded it on for 157,500. So the the value the actual valuation that the the, the chat that bought it off me got was two ten. Um, he bought it for one five seven. So he's still got a massive chunk of equity um, in the property. So that's a win for him. I'm getting a family out of a property they don't want. So it's a win for them. Um, and I'm getting paid 
the difference between the 148 and the 157. So I'm making uh, nine and a half grand. And that, that nine and a half grand was for a two hour journey down to Essex, uh, down to Basildon. Now, the thing is, it's um, uh, there's some in the industry say that I sell the cream, as in, I, uh, if I kept it, I'd have the cream and I, I'm actually selling it because I'm selling a big chunk of equity. But the, the point is that if it's, if it's not one I want to put in the portfolio, but I can make the cash in the till, that gives me nine and a half grand in cash right now. I don't have to wait six months to sell it to get my money. I don't have to uh, rent it. I don't have to look after the property. I don't have to take a trip down to Basel all the time. I don't have to engage a letting agent that I don't know, that I don't know the area. I've just got nine and a half grand straight in the bank for a two-hour drive down to Essex, which 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 is pretty darn good. Now, of course, if you do deals um, on your patch or you know even out of your patch, you can decide what to do with them. If you wanted to keep it, you keep it. That's up to you. So the deals I keep are on my patch. This one's to trade out and. For this one, the lead didn't cost anything because I've got another golden rule, which is um, just be nice to everybody. And if you're nice to everybody, they'll pass you leads on for free. Um, and, and this one came from a lady in Leicester that I couldn't help. Um, it was far too upside down, and I got actually pipped at the postponed price uh, by another investor in the area, actually. And because I we stayed friends, she... Uh, referred me on to this uh, this lady, uh, this couple who we eventually got out of. So, cost uh, the investor three grand to get into it, packaging fees and a bit of arrears on the mortgage to pay. Um, but the profit to me was nine and a half thousand pounds cash in till, which is pretty good for two hours' work. So, um, and another one that was a straight purchase, a lease option type deal. I'll quickly show you this one. It's um, this one is a two bed flat on the ground floor. Uh, a one bed flat on the set on the first floor, and then a one bed flat on the top floor. And it, and it was the, the the landlady. It was a tired landlady. Um, the place was getting kicked about a bit because it was on the Morecambe coast, and it's there were the immigrant tenants that were uh, low demographic tenants, and they, they were kicking the place about. They weren't paying the rent, and she was struggling to manage it, and she just wanted out. And so she, what she did was she contacted me. She's based in Plymouth, and the property's in Morecambe. She was advised to invest in the north by somebody else, um, and she she was just losing a rag with it. So. She reckoned it was uh, worth 160 um, for this particular property, and because it's not my area, I thought, well, I'll do the research and um, you know I'll find out what it is actually worth. And I reckon it's worth about 148. Um, the, it's, it's funny, the outstanding mortgage that I found out um, in the next phone call uh, was actually 148. So there's no money in the deal at all for her, um, but I agreed to buy it at 160. And, and some of you on the on, on the on the webinar will know what I'm doing, but some of you won't. So I'll explain it for the ones that don't. The reason I'm buying it at 160 in a greener price is because I'm not going to actually pay for it for 12 years. Now, there's a fair chance that that will go up in value. There's a fair chance it will double in value in 12 years. And so in 12 years' time, it'll be worth 360, and I'm going to pay 160 for it. Uh, sorry, 360, that's not right, is it? 320, and I'm going to pay 160 for it. Now, because this is, I'm in Northampton, as you, as you guys know now, but um, the the properties of Morecambe, it's still four and a half hours drive for me. So it breaks my golden rule. Don't invest more than 30 minutes from where you are because there will be deals there. Um, so I want to trade this one out as well because I phoned a couple of uh, letting agents. In fact, there's three in Morecambe and two of them slammed the phone down on me uh, and one of them said, yeah, you'll have trouble with that one, but I'll manage it for you. And I thought, oh, good Lord. So I don't want this property at all. And that's what the, the original landlady had found out uh, once she'd bought it. So... So I've got it secured for 160 in 12 years. I sold it out for 6995, and I sold it to someone in the area, so I can be as ethically as, as ethical as possible. He can get to the property in 20 minutes. Did a bit of work, managed the tenants properly, and it now cash flows cash flows by 920. Oh, it cash flowed after he finished it, uh, 925 a month, because um, the mortgage is 325, and the um, the income rent is about just over 1200. So it cash flow by uh, 925 a month. Now he's got that property now for 12 years, cash flow at 925. Now the total cash flow, this is gross, but the total cash flow on that for 12 years is £133,000. Plus if it doubles, which it, it's fairly likely it will in 12 years, he's got another another £160,000 in capital growth as well. So he's making on that property over 12 years uh, well, whatever it is, 290,000, I think. Yeah, whatever. I'm sure you can add it up yourselves. It's, um, so I try, So that's well worth 6995, and he could see that. So um cost 1500 to put together in legals, which I paid on this, this occasion. I was quite close to the vendor. So I make five and a half grand. I didn't go to see the property. 
Um, we met the vendor halfway, so she, you know, we didn't go travel all the way to um, Portsmouth. We met her halfway in a co- in a, uh, a cafe bar. Did the deal on on uh, in the cafe bar. Put it out to the database, which I've got, as you've seen, I've got a fairly big database of buyers. It was sold within two hours, um, which is not bad for five, five and a half grand. A quick trip down to um, a, a quick drive out, and then uh, um, a quick email blast out five and a half grand. And of course, it's a win for her because she gets out of the property. It's a win for the investor because he gets um, nice cash flow and he gets nice capital, or it could get nice capital growth in the future. And some of you may be thinking, what's the difference of that 148 and 160? Well, eventually, if he decides to sell um, at any point during the contract, that 12 grand difference that goes back to her, um, the landlady, because it was her money anyway, because um, it agreed 160. And that's all agreed in the deal. So and it's funny that these, these two deals actually happen in the same week. So we're putting. Uh, we put what 13 grand or something in the same week, and that's just from a, a two-hour drive and a, ha- and a half-hour drive and a couple of phone calls and email blasts. So um, this is uh, you know real money. So, and I thought, would it be okay if I showed you a great deal? Um, the slides on. I've got a um, vendor conversion training course, uh, vendor conversion intensive, uh, which we sell out at 497 plus VAT. Uh, would you? Oh, it's got the wrong date on there, so that's not Saturday the 14th of December at all. It's September 5th and October 6th. Uh, I've got two different dates. Uh, one's a Friday, one's a Monday. Um, it's a one-day thing. It's 497, small classrooms, um, so we can all get to grips with doing vendor deals and all the paperwork and parts of the pre-main model and, and all that sort of stuff. Um, so so what what do we do on it? Well, you leave knowing all the different director vendor types of cases, so all of the pre-made model and all of the three parts to each uh, letter in the new mnemonic, because they've all got different ways of dealing with uh, uh, different types of vendor. So you'll, you'll leave knowing all of those um, for the different types of cases. You won't. Some do, don't do all of the cases because you, you you kind of get uh, to to like a, a particular type of case, and you you kind of run with that particular type of case, and, and that's how you make your, how you build your business. Um, you leave knowing or beating your competitors because if you bring newspapers down to the day, I'll call them all for you live, and we'll see what they do and see what they like. So, um, and we do that every um, workshop that we that we run. Um, you leave with all the scripts um, and systems to get to turn leads into deals, um, and I use I call it uh, script one, script two, and script three to get you get the guys, the vendors into a funnel to um, to get them into deals. And every bit of paper and contract for each type of deal to do because they're all slightly different and stuff. And, and if you've been on my website, you'll uh, you'll know there's 80 odd bits of paper and contract and all sorts on there, so so you leave with all of them anyway. Um, it, the, I say it's for everyone. It's it, it, it's not actually for everyone um, in reality. I I've had beginners, I've had improvers on it, and, I, and I've had uh, quite a few experts on on my uh, vendor conversion intensive workshop because it's not a standalone strategy, and, and it's for anyone that's either at the beginning and wants to trade to build the cash pot, an improver if you've got a bit stuck or you've run out of cash because we've all done it, put too much money out there, it's capital deployed, you can't use it for other deals. We've, we've all been there, um, or lots of us have been there doing that, and we need to build a, another wall chest or more deposits. Um, experts sometimes, yeah, I don't know, maybe it's not. So you can you can decide. If, if you're already making um, 30, 40 grand a month in your, in your, from your portfolio, then it's probably not for you. Um, because it's another bit of work that you might want to add on, uh, you, you'd have to add on. So maybe it's not with the experts. So what we'll go through is the pre-med model, every type of deal, um, diagnosing borrowing because there's a Consumer Credit Act uh, of 74. We've got to be a bit wary of that when we're um, dealing with finances. The whole full uh, Maps Plus process in detail, the whole model uh, for securing deals. Uh, and then after you've done it, because I'll know what you're doing in a house or I'll know what you're doing with a vendor or know what you're doing with a deal, um, you can joint venture with me to put cash in till because you can send the deal to me that you've got just secured on your patch on your area, uh, and I'll send it out to my database and we'll sell it for you. And so you don't even need customers because um, I've got the customers anyway. So uh, we'll sell deal, deals for you. And and what what I do on these is uh, the the weekly plan is a full weekly plan, 28 day plan to get to a deal. Put the deal straight on the table. It won't be completed by then because that's maybe a little bit unrealistic, but um, it'll be on the table, uh, ready to put cash in your till. So we plan to, and of course, um, it's all about a bit of practice as well. So we've got a safe environment. There's only us in the room. There's no vendors or anything, so we can um, uh, have a bit of practice at doing the deals and and the conversations that we have in the houses and um, with the vendors and stuff. 
Right, there's, a bit, there's a bonus with it as well. Uh, all this stuff's on um, available as well. The property deal analyzer, which keeps keeps the numbers out of a deal. <clears throat> Sorry, keeps the emotion out of a deal and keeps the numbers in. Um, so the, that's on uh, Excel. Uh, you can also have my, all of my templates, my newspaper templates for adverts. I've got I've used. Um, there's actually 300 in in the actual um, uh, document, but some don't display correctly because they've been made on different types of artists. You know graphic designers, uh, programs and stuff. But you can have that, so you can um, pick your adverts out to use. Um, we're not precious about it, you can take them away with you. Um, if you wanted to go on the Google route and the website route, uh, a buddy of mine, uh, Ben, made a, uh, a complete guide to setting up a Google AdWords account for your own website, if, you, if, you, if that's how you're doing it. Uh, again, I'm a, I'm a leaflet, I use leaflets all the time. Templates uh, are available, they're on the website as well to, uh, to split test, so you can gauge which one's working, which one's not, and what to do to improve. Um, and then, of course, um, tax secret. This isn't a book to read from book cover to cover because um, it's about tax, and that's never uh, going to be the most interesting thing in the world. But it is the book to um, to have to ask questions of your own accountant um, to make sure he's keeping you on track. Because some um, work for H some secret agents, as Ian Wallace tells me, some accountants are secret agents for HMRC and they just want you to pay all the tax. So this book is uh, it's quite valuable. It's written by Colin Davidson, who's a, a specialist property accountant. And of course, you're getting a high fires guide to leave it in anyway um, for coming on the webinar tonight. So, um, and the contracts and paperwork. So, just a couple of people who've done uh, my workshops before: Philip Towson, who is a, an 18-year-old guy um, from Swiss, uh, from Switzerland. Uh, he now lives in East London, and his first deal made him forty-three thousand uh, pounds. And the reason he got that, and it, these testimonials, testimonials are on um, YouTube, so you can, you can have a search for them and listen to them if you want to. It, it, he secured, it was a property, a one bed, um, worth 190, I mean a market value 190. He secured it for 127,500, and this was just a couple of months ago. Uh, he couldn't buy it because he couldn't get a mortgage, he was only an 18 year old guy. Um, but he actually, I put him in touch with someone that could buy it, that they secured it, put it in an auction. Two weeks later, it went for 176. Um, so that was him, 43,000 pounds. And he went out and bought a Ford Focus, I can't believe it. Um, I would have told him to <laughs> put it in his war chest and buy a, buy a banger or something. But anyway, 43,000 on his first deal. And this is, so this is about real money. It's not about um, building portfolios and all that sort of stuff. It, it, it's about real money. Of course, you can keep the properties if you want to. That's completely up to you. Um, another one of my guys is Steve Mitchell. Again, we did an interview. Well, I did an interview with him um, uh, a couple of months ago, or a few months ago. And it, his first deal. He's, he operates in um, in Liverpool, and his first deal, which he did completely wrong. He'll tell you that himself, or he tell, says on the interview. He still made thirty thousand pounds in profit on his first deal, so it's it's this is about making money in the property, not about building the portfolios in the property. And this is real money in real life, you know. These these guys are out there on the ground doing it, so and they don't always need me to um, to sell the deals for them. Sometimes I keep them, sometimes I sell them themselves. So, um, what if you haven't got any money to start? Well, you don't need any at all. And I started from scratch anyway, so I can show you exactly how to do it from scratch. Um, you don't need to negotiate. I, I actually teach um, negotiation skills at Coventry University, and um, it, it's funny. I, I, got, I got the gig because I don't negotiate. Um, I, I, what I do is I build my own from the ground up, and uh, the Coventry University gig is quite a good one. And uh, I'm a bit of a rebel there because um, I won't use the word negotiation. It's called building and building bridges and stuff. So um, you don't need to. You don't need to be a hard negotiator at all. It's not about that. Um, it doesn't matter if you've got bad credit or you can't get a mortgage because you're not actually going to use a mortgage or finance to, to secure the, the, the house because we're not actually buying. Um, in this this particular stage, you're just securing the deal. Um, it doesn't matter if you haven't got any funds for deposits because um, you don't need them because you don't buy, etc. So um, I've got the paperwork and contracts. That's all covered. Um, if you're in the south especially, especially in the M25, uh, I'll show you how to protect the deal because if you put out a deal to... Um, my database, lots of people will see it um, and it'll, it'll just get nicked. So I'll show you how to protect the deal um, during the workshop as well. So, uh, And I've also got, obviously I've got a database of customers that you can, you, you're can quite welcome to use um, to, to sell the deals um, to if, the, if we know what you're doing. So we've ticked everything on the what ifs and just to make it double risk free, there's a 100% money risk uh, money back guarantee. So by lunchtime, if you're not happy with what, um, what you're learning, just give a, give me the workshop, the, the manual, the operations manual, and the kit back, um, and I'll just refund you on the on the workshop. And I'll do that with all of my products on the website as well. So, so when when's the next one? It's on uh, f the next course 
Um, the next workshop that we're doing is Friday the 5th of September and there's another one scheduled for Monday the 6th of October and they're in the training suite at Peterborough. Uh, the, the training suite at Peterborough is actually um, Progressive Properties head office. They let me use their training suite um, and their staff come and man it for me and record the day for us and all that sort of stuff. We, we start at 9 o'clock and we, uh, we finish about 5 but I'm normally there till about 8 or something because I usually get loads of questions after it as well. So it's on Friday the 5th of September on Monday the um, 6th. There's I, I sell this um, particular workshop at um, uh, the PPN meetings at, um, when, I, when I kind of tour around the country as well. So it's uh, it, we've sold quite a few other places already, so they'll have to get on uh, pretty quick. So vendor conversion intensity 497 plus VAT. I expect um, after a bit of a deal, because the webinar and Duncan was forcing me to give a bit of a deal away, so we're going to do it for £299 for um, you guys on the webinar tonight anyway. And if I include uh, the works, which is the real life scenarios manual, the dongle, which is um, um, all the contracts that are on the website, and you can take a look on the website, there's about 80 odd, 80 odd different contracts and spreadsheets and manuals on there. They're on, on the dongle. Um, the seven hours recording of um, the Getting Leads workshop, which is, which is effectively Dominate Your Ground, but the Getting Leads workshop, that's all on audio. You don't get the MP3 player. Um, and the, uh, uh, the manual transcribed on it's an ebook it's transcribed about 123 pages or something um, if you get all that as well as long as it's a download it's not the hard copy ones you can have that included in the in the workshop uh, price and that resells on the workshop on the website at 495 um, as a pack and it's just getting rebranded now um, in my um, website which is kind of black and grey and terrace houses type branding so which you might see in a, in a while please don't buy it twice it's it's not different stuff it's the same it's the same so um so if i include that um which is 495 pounds it gives you massive value on a 299 workshop there's the link for the workshop now this is this is only for um there's 262 registered for the um the webinar i can only fit 45 in the room on the 5th of September and the 6th of October. And they're the two dates. The 5th of September is a Friday, 6th of October is a, a Monday. I'm going to keep this link up so you can register. You can get it. Um, I'll refund all your fees that you're paying on your first deal anyway, because I want you to. This is about deals, not about training. Um, but I'll do it for 29.99 for you for the whole day. That includes the pack from the website to take away with you, and that. Uh, includes a whole day's training at um, the training suite in Peterborough. It's 29.99. I know that sounds bonkers, um, but it's really not about the training. It's about the deals that you can do afterwards. So that's why 29.99. I can only fit 45 in the room on the, on the first day and 45 in the second day. And we've already sold 20 places on the first one, and a, a, I think there's 25 sold on the second one. There's only about 15 um, places on each. 15 to 20 places on each. There's 262 on the webinar are registered. So the link's live until lunchtime tomorrow, um, and then it'll come down once the the, the spots have, uh, have filled. So get it now um, before you go. And that's me done. Thank you very much for listening. And if there's any questions, I'll ha quite happily take um, questions. Anything I might have missed out or has Duncan gone now or not? No, no, I'm back. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's fantastic. Thank you so much, Mark. Um, just, uh, I'll give everyone just a, a, a few minutes because I'm sure they were uh, listening intently because I actually had the question box turned off for a bit. So if you've got any questions, um, fire them in the uh, in the question box because we're going to stick around until uh, everyone's had all their questions answered. Um, I'm still just getting over that uh, that offer. Of, uh, <laughs> I thought you were mad when you mentioned it uh, a couple of days ago, but uh, so we'll, we'll see. That's fantastic. Thank That's you. Quite, no, you're very welcome. Um, so yeah, like I said, everyone, chuck your questions in the question box. We'll give you um, a minute or two. And Mark, so are there just while um, everyone, because often there, you know, there's about a 30 second minute delay, and when everyone gets their questions in, like, have you do you have any sort of frequently asked questions which you're you're, you're plagued with the whole time? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. There's there's a couple of uh, one is um, I live in two portion area. So there's, there's no deals here, and, and it's I, I promise if I, I I'm entrenched in Northamptonshire and I run a patch in um, Warwickshire as well. If I had my time again, I'm 47 years old, and I'm here to kind of to stay. We kind of like the area. I mean, I'm actually sat in my office near my home office at the moment, and at my, the back of my house is glass, and I, and I've got the woods um, out to the back. So I've got it's full of trees, and squirrels live in the back garden, and I'm actually next door to Silverstone. 
uh, the racetrack, and I hear the cars from the you know from the office when they're going around on on the because they do more than just the Formula One race, obviously. Um, they use the track all year. Uh, I can I can hear the cars. I've got I'm in the countryside. I love the place, but if I had my time again, I'd just move to London and do it. So even even inside the M25, there are deals there. And I get deals sent to me all the time uh, from our guys on the ground that, 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 that work the city. So there are deals wherever you are. And it, one guy actually said to me, um, he was actually from Brighton, and he's a good friend now. He, he was in Brighton, and he said, oh, Mark, oh, there's no deals in Brighton. It's all London money in Brighton. Um, I said, I'm, I'm sure you're right. I'm sure you're right. And now he trades deals. This was about two years ago he said this. Now he trades deals in Brighton um, because the deal the deals are there. It's the skill is recognizing where the money is in the deal, and pulling it out and paying yourself. Um, mm. It's not about the BMW or the discount, and, and especially not about the discount on rising market. Um, yeah. So yeah, the skill is recognizing where the money is. And I think one thing which is quite interesting, um, which I saw from earlier from one of your slides, when you were saying about sort of, uh, I mean, I'm sure a lot of people say, but oh, why why are you giving away these? Why are you selling these deals? Like there's so much more equity in it. But just seeing your numbers at the beginning, it's it's rather than you know spending six months, you know, a year trying to work on like one deal, you are you're churning out like numbers after numbers. So these like these five grand, these ten grand, these fifteen, twenty grand, you know, you're doing many, many deals in the same amount of time that somebody, you know, would do one deal. Um, and so I think yeah. it's almost a false economy thinking focusing too much on, you know, the just the big equity. Um, because you're it seems to be you're in and out in these deals, you know, in a matter of, you know, in a couple of weeks, which is um very no. interesting. No, so you know, it's, it's just for me. It's just about how much cash I can put in the till, and I, I do. So I'll say this to an audience or out loud, or you know, in a group, is if you've got a target to work to. Well, my target when I when I started was, I've got to make a thousand pounds a day and put that in the till, and a thousand pounds a day gives me twenty grand a month because there's twenty working days in the month. If I can do that, then I've got a business, and and that's that is so simple. It's silly, but put a thousand pound in the till every day. And you'll have quite a nice lifestyle, thanks very much. Yeah, fantastic. Um, a couple of questions to said um about sorry, is it twenty nine ninety nine or two hundred and ninety nine? No, Mark literally just took off ninety percent and it is twenty nine ninety nine. It really is that mad a price. So um, yeah, it is twenty nine ninety nine. I think that was I think Helen asked that and a couple of other people. Um right, the questions are starting to come in. Um uh, Vula um says oh no, I've just asked that. Um Roger says, um, "What have you found is your best response at advertising?" Oh, good question. Yeah, thanks for that, Roger. The the I do a <clears throat> a mixture of stuff on the ground, so I might do a, a dozen different, um, you know, a dozen different uh, strategies on the ground, and and I must admit, I don't measure the the one that's the best. I, I measure the the cash it's costing me out versus the deals that I'm getting in or the cash in. So. They all work in their own little way, and I think it was Henry Ford said it. He says half of half of my advertising works um, all of the time. I just don't know which half. And that's <laughs> quite true with me. I, I, I don't know which one's the actual best. If but if I don't do them all, I don't get any leads. So I, so I do them all. I mean, you, you won't do. I mean, I've got about a dozen that I use, but you don't, you, you don't need to use a dozen perhaps to start off with. You, you pick two or three that you like doing, or you can find time for, or you've got the funds for for the more expensive ones. But they start from free. So if you if you're starting from scratch, you do the free stuff. If you've got loads of time, you do the stuff that um, will cost you in, le in you know shoe leather. If you've got a little bit of money and put a bit into it and plan a budget and stuff. Um, but the idea of, of of workshops like this is to get you to a deal as fast as I possibly can, so that the money you're spending out on your your marketing isn't painful, um, yeah. because the, your first deal will pay for your your past marketing and your future marketing to get to the next deal. Then you can start paying yourself and uh, and that's the kind of Kind of, kind of plan the four week. That's what the four weeks plans for. Fantastic. Good question. Yeah, good question. Um, this is uh, from Dominic. Uh, hi, Duncan um, and Mark. A brilliant webinar. Great content. Uh, my question is, what would Mark recommend as the best online medium of lead generation? Google, Facebook ads, uh, and just in general, what has he found to be the best way of generating deals? Or are you strictly offline? What's what's? Uh, how do you answer yeah. that? Ah, uh, good. That's a good. That's a brilliant question, Duncan. Because in 2010, we had 18 websites up and running, and we were paying Google Ads. Um, or well, someone was doing it for me. I wasn't uh, doing it. It's, it's, it's quite complicated. But we were, we were paying. <coughs> Google, <coughs> excuse me, Google a, a, around 
oh, I don't know, double at least double what the uh, Fly Martin was was um, costing. It wasn't bringing us in double the leads, and the work as good quality leads. So we decided in 2010, or, or it was, I think it was right in the middle of 2010, in the summer, that we dump um, the website. I should have kept them as pretty examples, but we dumped mm -hmm. the websites completely, dumped Google, because the, the Google are quite clever guys. They're, they're quite clever at getting money off you. Or taking money out of your bank account, um, I know um, and so we dumped all the all flat, uh, the online stuff all together, and just stuck with traditional advertising uh, and traditional. Uh, my, my, my advertising is a little bit guerrilla, to be fair, because I, I started from scratch, and, and I still do the stuff that I started with. Um, but the offline stuff is is better quality leads. They're in the area. It's targeted um, marketing, and uh, and you get deals, and it's enough. So I don't need to go. Google is, Google's hard to control geographically. They say they're getting better, and people keep telling me, "Oh, yeah, you can do um, Google local and all that sort of stuff." But uh, you, if you're in London, you'll get leads in Glasgow all the time. Mm. And it's, uh, <laughs> they're, 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 they're tough to convert. <laughs> <laughs> I'm offline. Yeah, no, apparently, uh, yeah, Google's getting pretty expensive. It's um, it kind of used to be a bit of the Wild West. You could just uh, everyone, you know, it was free free money almost when you got your ads right. But now, I've, Everyone's got onto onto it. Um, Stephen says, um, "You mentioned uh, that we um, that if we get the uh, answer stage and leave the house, um, can we still call cool email you for help if we haven't done your course?" Um, <laughs> ah, that would be that would be a good one. It, the, the reason the reason we go through the Maps Plus model, um, which is the bigger model and it's got all the little bits in, is uh, on a webinar. I've only got an hour, you know, before people need the loo and need to, you know, get on with their lives and stuff. So I go through this four-step model to give you um, the kind of the, the, pro, the simple process. But if I, if you spent a day with me, and I know what you're doing, and I know what you're saying, and we've practiced together, and we've spoken about it, and we've done some questions together, and we've done some scenarios, uh, I've got a lot of confidence that you'll of, of, of getting the deal and doing the deal, and therefore the, the people that have put some cash in my till, um, can, I'll get them go and work with because I spent some time with and got to know me. So that's the, the kind of idea behind it because. I get sent about 100 deals a week, and, and I, I promise 99 of them are junk. I get every single deal from the spreadsheet peddlers. I get every single deal from the guy with the um, the 100 grand house that he's got for 85, but it needs 15 grand's worth of work. That's not a deal. It's not a deal. Sorry, it's just not. Um, I get tons of them, and most of them just end up in the bin, and it just takes up time to you know to plow through them and stuff. And yeah, so it's about getting to know each other and working with who you like and who, you, who you've had a chat with, and you've got to know a little bit rather than just. Give us a call for advice and stuff. Fantastic. Uh, Andre just said, um, uh, just yeah, just taking this up. Um, when do I get the details sent out? Um, Andre, I will. Um, we well, got the details in terms of the dates, but um, in the next couple of days, we will. Um, I'll email you personally. Um, or a couple of other people being like, that is an. Uh, Alan said that is an unbelievable offer. Thanks, Neil. Uh, I've purchased the course. Can't wait and stuff. Um, we've got uh, Neil says. Um, do you really think deals can be found anywhere? I used to find deals in Aberdeen, and I used uh, I used the fact that the market was stagnant to close the deal. Currently in Aberdeen, the house prices are soaring, and the general public are paying 10% over marking, uh, market value. Do you think that deals can be found here, or better going to a neighbouring city, i.e. Dundee? Ah, brilliant question. Yeah, that Aberdeen's an, abs an absolute classic um, city because it's quite wealthy, um, and it's it kind of stands alone in 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 the kind of top of Scotland. There, it. Yes, there are deals there. Is it, what happens in a, in a in a place like that is you do different types of deals. So we're not really after the discount. We're after <clears throat> we're after uh, flips are fantastic for, um, for for places like that. Um, and you, you don't need to buy them to, to to do them. If we do what's called a blank canvas refurb, so let's say we've got a two bed terrace house um, that's a complete dump. The, the the agents don't really want it because they want pretty stuff to put in the window. Um, we'll get the uh, you know the day workers, you know the guys that work for cash and clear houses. We'll get them in. We, we don't have to pay them because they can take the stuff and, and sell it on eBay to make their money. So we get it stripped out um, completely, usually in a day, maybe two days. They take the curtain poles, they take the curtains, they take the flooring, they take every all the, everything. Everything's out of the house. It's all gone. And then we um, paint the inside white. Uh, we, we make it look as as pretty as possible. We're spending not a lot of money. And then we'll we'll complete the refurb, but we complete the refurb, but we're not going to do it before we've got a sale. So when it's white, we give it to an, an agent, and um, he can sell it at top book. Bear in mind, we're going to do the refurb as soon as the the the, the, the buyers have got a dip. Well, they they don't call it a dip; they call it an AIP. But uh, so flips are fantastic for rising markets in in good areas, um, and people people don't stop dying. 
uh, unfortunately. Um, people uh, don't stop getting divorced. People don't stop moving for job promotions and stuff. So it's, it's, it's not the BMV, it's not the discount, but you can turn a um, an <clears throat> <clears throat> oh, excuse me. You can turn a um, a kind of a, a non BMV property into something over time, and that you can take cash flow out of, and wait for the market to rise even more over the next three or four years, or two years, or what, whatever it is, uh, and then sell on then. So yeah, brilliant, brilliant place to do deals. Fantastic. Um, lots of people um, emailing saying they're uh, really excited, can't wait, um, looking forward to this fantastic offer, great presentation. So um, thank you very much. Um, could, could, quite a few people just um, have emailed in the question saying, um, "Hey, they've um, they've signed up, but um, there isn't an option of um, what date to pick." Um, don't worry about that. Um, I will email everybody tomorrow, and um, you can ask, you can tell me which your preference is, and then um, we will tell Mark that. So um, don't yeah. worry about that. Um, that will be all sorted out uh, tomorrow. Um, here's a question. Uh, da -da -da -da. Offer is fantastic. That that. that. Uh, Yep, that's good. Um, Vula says, um, yep, is it the same price for um, both dates? Yep, it is. It's twenty nine ninety nine for um, both of them. Uh, keep on chucking your questions in, guys. These um, they are all good. Um, Mark, one question for me. Um, you were saying about about the Henry Ford thing, about um, you know that 50% of the marketing works, but I'm just not sure which 50%. <laughs> have you? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I like that. Um, have you... Have you um, Done much sort of um, tracking in the sense that you know if you see um, an advert and they suddenly say "Cool Louise" or something, and then you call up the office and they ask for Louise, you're like, okay, Louise is my leaflet, so Louise is my um, my postcode SW whatever, and then somebody calls up and asks for like James. There are no Louise and there's no James in your office, but that's just a way to sort of uh, to track it to know which which ones are getting the best response. Have you have you used any of that or? Yeah. or yeah, I've used, I've used, I think I've used every form of tracking method on the planet. I've, I've used, um, I've, there's, there's an alphabet of 26 letters, so I've used the alphabets on the leaflets, um, as in A to, A to Z, I've used different ones, and it, what they do is they, not just for tracking for where they come from or where they were delivered, but actually which leaflets have delivered them, because um, I pay them a bonus when they, um, uh, when we get a deal from the, their patch or, the, you know, their, their houses, and, and I must admit, and I've tried different colours, um, I've tried the, the um, days of the month and all sorts of things. And the thing is, I, I could get geeky about it, and I, on on the actual words, I, I can actually give you a, a, a plan, an actual working patch, and the, and the kind of stats and stuff that came from it. But in, in reality, you forget about this sort of stuff when your first few deals come in. It, it's it's a bit of a worry when it's been painful. If if someone out there, you know, in the audience is still in a job and they're working nine to five and they're, they're making, I don't know, four grand, whatever people are making jobs nowadays, four grand a month, say. So they're making four grand a month. But they're spending um, they're spending 500 quid on advertising for um, property uh, leads. That becomes painful pretty quick. And the, the thing is, if I can get everyone to a deal and get the ca some cash in until they're actually not spending their own money, they're spending the business's money, or, the, or they're spending the money that they're bringing in from deals. So it, it's all, all of a sudden it's not painful. And when it's not painful, it doesn't actually matter. So I, nowadays, I must admit, I manage the, the leaflets closely, and, uh, and we've got fairly tight systems, which I'll which I'll show you all. But the, it, when you when you're making the the far what far outweighs the money you're spending, and it actually it's not painful at all, and it's it's actually quite nice to um, count the cash out versus the cash in rather than split test every single leaflet that goes out there. And, mm. and I'm sure we lose a few. I mean, I'm, I, we get leaflets dumped in gardens sometimes, and <laughs> our, our postcard guy that does he does. Um, we've got a few guys that do postcards and bin sticks, and um, the, the bin stick guys don't go out, or they're calling sick, and you lose a day's work. And it's it's, it's all about managing people, really. And, uh, and yeah. It, we're, we're, yeah, but I have tried to spit test them, but I'm not Tesco. So. Do you, do you do you work through a company? Do you hire your? Do you hire students, or do you hire like old age pensioners, or like every? Have you have you got your own in house people, or do you outsource it to like a like a leaflet company? Uh, I've I've tried both, but I found even if you use a leaflet company, you um you've still got to manage them because I I, I was forever phoning. I remember one. I was I was forever phoning them up, um on a let's say a Tuesday morning. I can't remember what day it was now. I'd phone them up on a Tuesday morning. And said, uh, uh, Roger, uh, have my leaflets gone out? Because I haven't had any calls today. Oh yes, Mark, they're gone out tomorrow. <laughs> I say that every time I phoned him, <laughs> so I didn't chase him. I didn't get any calls. It's just really weird. I thought, even if I, I'm employing someone to do, you know, I'm employing a company to do this, contracting a company. 
that you've still got to manage them and chase them. It's really yeah. bizarre. So I just I just take my own now. I recruit them on the ground. Um, they, they all work. Well, most of them work cash in hand, and they tell their friends that I'm I'm paying this ludicrous number uh, fees for delivering leaflets because I get a good bonus if, they, if we get a deal. Um, and then tightly manage them. So I, I've also found that there's no. Uh, I've got a guy that does bin sticks and a guy that does postcarding. So uh, postcarding is, is is fairly simple. It's just going around the, the the chip shops and the takeaways and stuff and putting your card in. And I found that there's no route, there's no motivation for promotion to chief leafleter, or there's no step up in that type of hierarchy. They just want the 35 quid or the 40 quid, and that's all they want. Mm. So I tried to have a little structure there, but it just it just it's not such a work. <laughs> <laughs> just organized chaos. <laughs> organized chaos, yeah. Um, uh, Alex uh, Alex Green says, um, "How do I go about uh, finding people to buy the property once you know it's a good deal?" I've got them. I've got them on my. If you remember at the beginning, the, kind of one of the first slides. Yeah. Um, I've got a database of investors that buy. The, they don't all buy every month, obviously, but we, we send an email out on a Tuesday morning, and we sell the properties that we've got or the deals that we've got from Wednesday to Friday. So we've, okay. our, our fastest sale is 11 minutes, and um, some, they don't all sell. Don't please don't get me wrong. They don't all sell. Some some you don't get a bite on at all, um, and uh, you've just got to give it back and you know go back to the vendor and say, I'm sorry, we couldn't sell it. I mean, it's, there's no there's no cost to it or anything. Um, but yeah, fastest one's 11 minutes. Mm. I think what's great about this strategy is that it's, in terms of, I mean, it's, you know, it's, you're, you're investing, like, your time, but in terms of actual upfront costs and you're not plowing, like, thousands and thousands of pounds into getting a deal, it's, you know, pretty, lo as, 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 you know, a lot of strategies go, it's, it's as low risk as they come, really. Oh, yeah, yeah, so, it's a, well, I mean, we all do it from, if you're, if you're in property and you're looking for deals on the ground, you're going to trade one at some point. Um, if you're a newbie or an expert or a, or a, you know in the middle, whatever that means, you're going to trade one, one at some point because it, 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 you're already doing the work. So why not monetize it? And, yeah. and for me, it's not about the property; it's about the money. And I think that's why, why we're all in it, really. Even if we think we, we love bricks and mortar, and that's why I said right at the beginning that uh, I don't love property, I, I, but I fell in love with the money. So. Mm. Um, Stephen, uh, Stephen McKinnon says, um, thanks very much, great webinar and offer. Uh, Neil, um, thanks so much for answering my question. Um, very welcome. David, David says, um, I'm confused, um, how much is the one day course? Um, Dave, that is, uh, it's a one day course, it's the dongle, it's the information, it's everything for $29.99. Um, uh, mad, mad offer. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, Dominic, hi guys, one more question if that's okay. Yep. Um, what has Mark found to be the most common reason for motivated sellers selling? Thanks again. Ah, good question. Yeah, it's it, it's actually when the leads come into the top of the funnel when you when you kind of when you first get them in, sometimes they don't tell you what the the, the part the, which part of the pre-made model they're in or you know which scenario they're in. Um, so some of them don't get to the bottom because you kind of cancel them out before they get there because you don't want to be sitting in people's houses that don't want to sell. It. The, the golden rule is we only deal with motivated sellers. So um, those that say my house is worth 100, I want 100, I'm not budging and all this sort of stuff. We just don't go, they don't get through the funnel so we don't see them. Um, in reality, what you do is you end up choosing the type of scenario you like to work with. And some of you, you guys out there, you'll find divorce cases a little bit stressful um, or a little bit too emotional. And you'd have to be, have a hard heart not to feel for these people that are going through this kind of traumatic time. And None of them are horrible people, they're just normal people. Um, so it's quite difficult not to get emotionally involved sometimes, and I I do too. I mean, I get attached to them as well, and some of them are friends on Facebook. They know what I do, and and, and so you, what you end up doing really is you choose the deals that you do, and you become fussy. And I, I've got this: the two golden rules with deals is or scenarios is I don't deal with the over 65s, and the reason I don't deal with the over 65s is because um, the, the kids will they will come from all four corners of the earth to kick in the backside, because you, you no matter how good a deal you do. You're actually taking money off them, or you, they think you're taking money off them because it's their inheritance. Um, so I don't do the over 65s, um, and I don't I don't do with rude people. Um, it, it's just a life thing, I, I suppose. It's, if someone's rude to me on the phone in the first call or the second call, I, I just don't deal with them because I just don't, I don't want to. And it, it, it may you may not be able to see that quite yet if you haven't got any leads or something, but um, it, it's just a thing. I get fussy about the deals that I do, and if I'm going to spend a couple of hours in someone's house doing a deal, I actually want to kind of like them, if, if that makes sense. So mm. my kind of cases are, um, I, I quite, I don't enjoy in, uh, divorce cases, but I, quite, I kind of, I, I do them well, so I do divorce cases. I do repos um, uh, when the, when the 
there's someone I think I can help. So I do them. I quite quite enjoy them because they're quite sometimes quite detailed and quite messy. Um, I do. I don't do that many assisted sales with the oldies or the early retirees and stuff um, because it, it takes up a little bit too much time for me. Um, so you actually kind of choose the the um, the route you want to take by um, well one your morals, two um, what you like doing during the day, three who you like seeing and what type of deals you like to do, and, and also your financial position because if you've got some guy that's got a I don't know a hundred k house, he'll let you have it for seventy. If you can't buy it and and it's um, it's not in a great area but it does cash flow and you kind of want it but you can't buy it and he won't go for a lease option, you can you can get a bit stuck sometimes if you. Um, you know, if you're doing the wrong type of vendor, it's, it's not kind of the work you'd like to do. So, you, you, the answer to that question is you get you, you choose yourself really. Um, yeah. By what you like to do. Um, Kerry asks, um, how is then how does she get added to your uh, your investor list, your Tuesday investor list? Ah, good question. Lots of people just say add me, and it's it, although this has taken I mean, it's taken ages to build this up. Sort of, I don't know. I've been doing it for years. It's, I don't just add people because it's kind of I get to know them first because we like to know who's buying and and what they buy and where they buy. So it's just uh, it, well, if the, the easy answer to the question is drop me an email and we we'll get to know each other and talk and chat and if you tell me what you want and where you are and what type of deals you want. I'm sorry if that, I've left my Outlook open; it keeps pinging an email. But if you if you drop me an email and we get to know each other and we meet at a property meet or um, on the workshop, for example, and, and it, we'll get to know and then we'll put you on and and you you can get the deals. Perfect. Uh, I've got a question from Tony. Um, this is a uh, yeah, how long's a piece of a uh, string kind of thing. So, you, but what do you think? Uh, Tony goes. I, I heard about an investor in Luton who leafletted for a year and didn't get any leads. What was she doing wrong? <laughs> Not sure exactly. But what 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 do you think? Some of the what are the the obvious things which you 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 come across, Mark? For people yeah. who they're piling money, time, effort into all this marketing. I mean, have you seen any you know obvious things which come up again and again, which people are just doing? Well, yeah, I've, I've watched one do exactly that. He, um, what he did was, he was in Northampton. I pounce on Northampton every now and again. I don't do it all the time. And this guy, he must have been on a course somewhere because he, he started carpet bombing Northampton. He was doing 20,000 leaflets a week. I mean, that's an enormous amount. Uh, it's more than I've ever done, to be fair. And I, I, we just watched him because he was on our patch and we thought, you know, do we go and partner with him? Do we do we go and, do we we go stop him because it's too much? Or, But we just watched him and um, we knew it must be painful. Um, he got to about I can't remember it's week seven or week eight I'm not sure which one it was now but he got to about you know week seven or eight and he just stopped and I know why he stopped it's because it got too painful and he wasn't getting enough calls and uh, too painful financially that that is and we just started our little system off which I've used for years we started our little system off on his week eight and we started to get calls and in reality he was working for me for seven weeks he just didn't know it and uh, I, I mean yeah what do you say do you do you go and um, Kind of butt in and, and tell him he's doing it wrong and risk just having a row because he, he thinks you're a competitor, so you, you're just trying to muscle in and stuff, or do you just let him do what he does? Um, and mm -hmm. I would say it's not, it, it's odd. And it, our system is, is kind of it's multi layered because it's not just about the leaflet, it's not just about the advert in the paper, it's not just about the um, the postcard, and it's not just about the bin, it's not just about one of them, it's about doing a, a multi layered um, uh, strategy and a, 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 well, attack, I suppose. Um, on area because it, there's an old golden rule in advertising that it takes someone seven seven views of your um, message advert thing to to pick up the phone or to do something with you um, and that and that's not just seven weeks of leafleting that's kind of seven multifaceted different bits of marketing so yeah yeah it's interesting what you're saying there about that just. Twenty thousand a month. Um, I've just actually last week I just read the um, the compound effect by Dar I think it's Darren Hardy, yeah. and he was sort of talking about that, like you were saying how you've just had for years and years your system. You know, it's not going crazy over the board, but it's just consistent. It's consistent. It's, it's consistent. consistent. And that's you know? exactly it. Yeah. And um, you know, often it's, it's he was talking about it. It's how people, you know, New Year's Eve might decide um, to suddenly join a gym and I'm going to lose so much weight, and so you. You, you set yourself false expectations, going to the gym seven days a week for two hours, and it's unrealistic. It's much better just to just do something consistent, which you're going to just do for the next five, ten, twenty years, rather than you know burn out. Um, and so um, that was interesting in terms yeah. of you got your system in place. Yeah, and that, that's the that, that's the the kind of key. I think it's it is the compound effect. I've read that as well. It's it's, a, it's exactly that. <laughs> yeah. Um, Roger um, says. Um, 
Uh, he was uh, he was hoping to see you at the Newcastle PPN, um, but this month was cancelled. Um, is there any, are you rescheduling, or is there any plans to see you again? Yeah, yeah. well, I'm I'm originally from the northeast. I actually grew up in in a little town called Yarm in um, Cleveland, and most of my uh, well, a lot of my family are up there. And um, I don't know why why I cancel it, but um, I know Julian quite well. So yeah, if if he's um, if we've got a gap in the diary and, he, and he's, he's it's free in mind, then yeah, yeah, I'd love to come up. Yeah, I haven't seen them. Uh, I think I did the pin meeting up there about a year ago, so I haven't been up there for a year. So yeah, I'd love to. But Thanks. just book Julian and he'll invite me. Um, Stephen McKinnon says, um, "How many leaflets do you drop in a batch um, or in per week, and um, what do you, what kind of response do you expect from from each drop?" Um, good question. I can ask that a lot actually. <laughs> it's um, it's not just about the. I don't just drop leaflets on their own. And if you if you go out tomorrow. This is. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna say something. I shouldn't. Maybe I shouldn't actually. No, I'm gonna say yep. it. Sorry. Right. It's, it's only yours on the call, isn't it? Right. It's, <laughs> it's, um, if I go out tomorrow and drop a thousand leaflets in my targeted area on my, on my patch that I know, I can guarantee I'll get a phone call on the first thousand leaflets. A thousand leaflets in terrace houses is about a day's work, or you know, a good tough eight hours work. Mm. And if I go out and do them myself, I'll get a phone call. I can virtually guarantee it. And the thing is, people say, well, I've, I've, like the guy in Luton, he's done it for a year and he's not got a lead. The reason is that you've got to have a, a, a multi. It's, it's not the leaflet, and it's not the area. It's usually it's always in the management of the delivery, and that's the the key um, thing to take. It's putting your system in place so it's uh, well, as I said, consistent and but not painful. So the moment it gets painful, you're doing too much. So you've got to pull back a little bit. Um, but I, if I do a thousand leaflets on on a day, I'll get a phone call. If I give them to somebody else or a company, I won't get a phone call. Strange, that isn't it? Strange. Well, Strange. The missing link. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. yeah. Um, Dave Spencer. Um, he, he said um, he can't seem to get onto the website to register. Um, Dave, let me know if you're you're still having trouble because um, I know a couple of other people have um, been able to get on. Okay, so um, uh, if you can't get on, then drop me an email and I can uh, send you a link afterwards. But um, yeah, let me know if you're if you're still struggling. Um, Sarah says um. Just to, uh, just to clarify, do you secure the majority of um, these uh, deals on an option with a vendor so that you have the fixed period in which to sell? And how do you make sure that the person that buys the deal off you sticks to the timescale that you've set? Uh, what a brilliant question. Um, yes, let's say um, they're all different, but let's say I'm doing a, a, a refurb. I'll do a, or for a flip, for example, I'll do a 24 week option. So that's um, 12 weeks to. Uh, refurb the property and 12 weeks to sell um, and then I take it to an agent to, that, that I've got to know my numbers absolutely bang on there so I'm, I'm not looking for an agent's number that says we'll sell it and we'll market it and see if we can get it it's actually what will they sell at all day every day so I've got to be, I've got to be bang on with my numbers with that type, type of uh, deal um, an, an option normally is for 12 weeks if I'm selling to another investor so um, the 12 weeks, uh, the way I explain it to a vendor is that a retail sale, sale from the moment someone says yes normally takes about 12 weeks. So if I've got 12 weeks, I, we should be able to do it a lot quicker because we trade and, and we do stuff a lot quicker, but 12 weeks is a kind of standard time. Now, if the vendor's in financial trouble at the time, um, then I might pay his mortgage for three months if there's nothing in, it for the, in the deal for me um, just to take the pressure off because sometimes in financial, uh, you know, in finance cases, uh, the pressure's on there. So I might just relieve a little bit of that pressure and and do something, or get them some some sort of funds to to, to get you know to get out of the property or, or whatever. So the, the investors dealing with the investors is actually quite hard because um, I've got one guy who just sold a property who's actually in the Midlands, and it, it, sometimes I don't understand that when you've been in the house and you've done the deal and you've got this contract signed and it's there, the, the negotiations done, the, 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 you know the numbers, uh, you know what you've offered, and you know the time scale on the contract. I've had an investor just recently actually try and go. Round the back door and try and renegotiate the deal with the vendor, and that, that's um, and of course it, we strike him off the database. We'll not work with him again because he's just because he's done that. Um, mm. But they are, it is tough. Yeah, it, uh, there's no easy answer to the question, which is why it's a good question. Um, but it's that's why we don't just shove people on the database to to see a load of deals, and we don't. We used to put them in the BMV group, and um, and we found that the, people just like pulling your deals apart. <laughs> they don't actually buy them. <laughs> it was really weird. So we don't put them in the in the group anymore. We just send them to our own people and. Um, and they buy them, and they, they don't buy every month. I mean, it's not a, no one buys a property every month, I don't think. But um, yeah, it's, it's working with people you know and people that 
that you like. And some of my guys don't pay me fees till completion because um, they don't need to. They don't pay me whenever they like. I'm not too bothered. I'm going to get the money eventually anyway. Yeah. Um, and someone someone actually <laughs> tried to stitch me for 300 quid um, a, a little while. It was only about a month ago, well, three weeks ago. And, and I thought, do, do you really want to spoil a relationship for 300 pounds? I mean, that, that's just... It, Lunacy, because you'll lose more than I will at I will at three hundred pound. Because I know I'm not going to deal with you again, mm. and, and you want to buy a property. It's just lunacy. So most of my deals with the with the investors are done in a handshake, um, and that's how that's how I like to work. It's not a in fact even my JV partners I do deals with they're all done in a handshake um, with the companies I work with and teach for. They're, they're mainly handshake deals. Uh, yeah. yeah, there is a risk. There is a risk without a doubt. It's a, a bit of a sort of cliche which you hear a lot, but it's it's so true. Like. People say the whole time, you know, property is um, it's a it's a people's game, um, yeah. and that's why, like, going to these sort of networking events, going to sort of like pin progressive meetings, you know, your Berkshire property meets, meeting people, and just going and hanging coffee, and actually, the more people you know and just talk, you know, it's it's it is, you know, it's about just forming relationships, um, and yeah, so I'd highly encourage that. Uh, yeah, to anyone. Abs- yeah, absolutely. You don't have to buy what the speaker's selling all the time, or. Right. You don't Leave your credit card at home and sit in your house. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Like, I used to I used to swim to the back every time, and then suddenly now I'm a bit. Uh, I'm now, now like you know takes a lot to get me out of the chair. But it's it's you meet some fantastic people, and um, everyone's in those rooms. You know, it doesn't matter from newbies to old. You know, experienced people. It's um yeah, yeah highly recommend that. Um, we uh, this is we we pretty much just touched on this. Um, so um. But yeah, Simon. So you, um, we pretty much touched on this. But he goes, "I'm creating my own website to generate leads, but uh, no, I won't have the cash to buy all the leads generated myself. Where is the best place to pass on these leads?" Um, so. uh, that's an excellent question. I actually go through this on the workshop because, um, but I'll touch on it now because it's because it's we've raised it. If if you th- there's a number of ways to cash out of the deal, and the first couple are, are the lead part. So it's, it's still a lead, so you can cash out a couple of different ways of cashing out there. And then that's before it turns into a deal, and then you can sell the deals. If that makes, I hope that makes sense. So it, on the lead part, I'm now sat on seven thousand eight hundred and fifty-five event motivated seller leads, and I, I used to sell them. And you can charge anywhere from a kind of fifteen quid to fifty quid. Um, I, I know one company charges one hundred and twenty-five quid for theirs. Um, but uh, if the type of person that buys them, it hasn't always got the skill to convert them into a deal. And that's the risk you run as a, a business. And it's a risk you run as, uh, for reputation as well because it, it's, it's an easy one to get flamed on forums for if if um, they can't convert them because they'll come back and, and people will shout and scream for 25 quid. They will. Sh- they, they, they can be quite vociferous about it. And I, I just found that selling leads was... Um, uh, it's, it's a dangerous game, I, I think. It's um, You've got a thick skin to do it. And it, it's not much money. It's only you know 25 to 50 quid um, a pop. I, what I do slightly differently, I do a little bit of work on the lead and qualify it. You don't have to go and see them all and all and, and buy them all, but qualify it, charge a little bit more money, um, like 250, 300, and sell it as a qualified lead with a few pictures and a brochure. Um, that's a, just a safe way of doing doing um, doing business. I think or running your business um, with your lead. So do a bit of work on it. So an, an actual raw lead, I wouldn't, I wouldn't probably sell. Well, I don't sell because I keep them all. Fantastic. Uh, here it goes, Dave. Um, I've just, I've just replied to you. Um, Simon goes. Um, will there be an audio of the webinar? Yes, uh, Simon, there will be. Um, I'm going to send out a replay uh, tomorrow morning, um, and so you can um, have that and rewatch it and listen to it and um, yeah, transfer that onto your iPod or do whatever you like of it. Um, Tony um, says, uh, "Sorry, one more, Mark. Um, yep. Do you target a commercial property?" Uh, well, I, I, we've got ten commercials ourselves. Um, we don't uh, on that particular side of it. We don't buy BMW. We just um, we've got two builders, Andy and Andy, and that sounds odd every time I say it. But Andy and Andy, <laughs> they're individual builders that self-employed. They 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 work for themselves and flip houses and stuff. And what they do is that when they recognise one that um, suits our criteria, which is um, you know, there's a certain spec we look for and stuff, then they'll pass it on to us and they'll do the work, um, they'll do the refurb for us. Because on our commercials we spend about 30000 at Woods um, before we can put it out to um, to use. So that's a, a slightly different, it's a slightly different side of the business to residential. The, the residential seems to be um, individuals 
um, it, it, there's a there's a, it seems to be an awful lot of there's two sides. There's the um, the investors that buy deals. They're the ones with um, quite a bit of cash and no time, so they can't find their own. And that's the professionals like the doctors, the lawyers, the dentists, that type of thing. Mm. And then there's the other side, which is the newbie um, that's just got into property, but they've, they've maybe been a fireman for 20 years and they've got they've got a bit of equity in the house and they've taken it out, or they've been on a property course and they've realised they can do some more with the money. The pension is not quite working, and they can do some more with it. So th th there's that sort of side of um, deal buyers as well. But the, the, the first set, the, the professionals don't buy commercial, generally speaking, as a, as a group. And the second set are too new. You wouldn't want to sell them commercial because um, th there's a lot of sharks in commercial. Um, so you, yeah, so I haven't really got a market, uh, an exit for um, commercial properties, really, although we do buy our own, but I haven't really got a, 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 an exit. So I, I purely focus on residential for the, for the selling. Fantastic. Uh, Patricia says, will this also work in the Netherlands? Uh, do you have any experience overseas? Wow! If you, um, <laughs> oh, that, that, I've never had that before. That's a, does does uh, does the Netherlands uh, fit within your thirty uh, minutes either way? <laughs> well, uh, if it does for you, um, <laughs> it would. It, right, there's a guy called in 2002. There's a guy called Rick Otten came over to the UK, and he taught us all how to do lease options. We didn't know how to do them before um, 2002, and he, he taught us all. I mean, he's a he's a, he's a nice guy, a big Australian guy. And he operated in Texas. He operated in um, in, in Australia, and it, he could probably uh, he would argue that it works anywhere, um, as long as you're from the Netherlands and you speak the language and you know you, you know the areas, you know the patch, and all that sort of stuff. It would work, but you've got to check out the uh, the legals. You, you've got to check out the uh, whether you can do the the all the creative types of deals. So it'd be worth, uh, and I'm sure there's groups and forums in in um, the Netherlands as well, just like there is here. On, on property investment now the, the reason um, uh, Rick was doing lease options in Australia is because it the, the rent doesn't stack on a normal buy to let for Australians they always have to put money into the property to, to cash flow it so it's a different market um, a model to the English one that's why he went to Texas and then he, he did the, the ones in Texas and, the, and, the, and they stacked more like the English ones so then he came to the UK and, and taught us taught a bunch of people how to do them here as well so yes it, yes it will work but do the research. Well, do the due diligence first, and do the research, and make sure that the legals are right. You can't do them in Scot. You can't do lease options in Scotland, for example. That's one little quirk of their their, their legal system. The, their actual buying legal system is slightly different as well, um, because they've got missives and settlement as opposed to ours as exchange and completion. And slightly the slight quirks of everybody else's system that doesn't quite work like ours. Uh, and you'll have to learn all those quirks to do it. But um, yeah, it will it will work. I'm sure there's. Um, uh, there will be motivated sellers without a doubt, um, because there is throughout the whole world. It's just the, the the different quirks of the deals that you've got to learn yourself. But yeah, sure, yeah, it should. Fantastic. Uh, Sarah goes. Um, Thanks so much for answering my question. Looking forward to seeing you in Peterborough. Um, Alex Green says, um, "I'm not sure exactly what this was referring to." Um, he goes, "So it becomes it becomes more like sourcing?" Question mark. I don't know if that was referring to a earlier question. Uh, maybe uh, just talk about that. Well, um, right. yeah, it, it is sourcing deals, sourcing leads, deals, and trades. Yeah, absolutely. You're right. Fantastic. And there was a question earlier about um, is um, is there a date on the weekend? But no, those those dates it, uh, it was a Monday and then a Friday. I'm sure if you uh, sweet talk the uh, you know, the boss or the employer, I'm sure you can get a, a Friday off. Yeah, you um, must be able to. Yeah. Unless you're, unless you're at a wedding or you're in a foreign country. Um, then it's just, just an opportunity not, not, not to miss you. Yeah, get there for 29 quid, just get there. <laughs> Tony, uh, thanks so much for your answer. Uh, Patricia, yeah, that will be, will be great. Um, uh, she goes, Patricia goes about the Netherlands. She goes, um, uh, that would be great. Um, a lot of properties do have negative equity down here. So potential um, of opportunity there, I'm sure. Yeah, there is, yeah. Um, this is great. We're starting to come towards, uh, the question is starting to slow down now. So. Um, if you, uh, I mean, if you, uh, we'll give you a couple more minutes to to get in any last questions. But um, I will, I'll start to wrap this up reasonably soon. Um, it's been it's been fantastic having you, Mark. Thank you so much for um, giving up your evening and um, teaching us so much, and you know, spending an hour just asking all our questions. Um, it's been it's been absolutely fantastic, really interesting, and um, yeah, thanks so much for coming down. No, it's um, you're very welcome. Thank you for the audience and everyone on on, on the on the webinar for for coming out. That, they're, they're some of the best questions I've heard in ages. <laughs> they're miles better than some of the questions I get asked. So yeah, it's been an absolute pleasure.
really have. And I look forward to seeing the guys that are taking taking us up on the offer for um, September um, or October. And it'd be, we'll have a great day. Um, I can't include lunch in that, obviously, but there's lots of restaurants around the train suite and stuff. And but I can include coffees and biscuits and all that sort of stuff during the day. So, yeah, I look forward to seeing you all. And then a couple more people. We have uh, Vula says, um, "Thanks so much for tonight. Um, see you in Peterborough. Um, we've got lots of uh, thank yous. Uh, thanks so much for the presentation, Mark. Learned a lot. Um, thank you. Uh, wow, can't, I still can't get over that offer. Crazy. Um, so yeah, really, really, really great. And um, I'll leave I'll leave the question box open for uh, 30 more seconds, and otherwise we'll call it a night." I've got one request from anyone that's still on, and I look forward to seeing you, seeing you Ruler. Uh, fantastic, you come in. Um, could you guys do me a favour and give us a punt on Facebook, or say it was a say what you thought about the webinar on Facebook? But can you do me a favour and don't tell them the price? That'd be fantastic. Because yeah. I don't want anyone. It's just for this webinar. I don't want anyone else to know. So that'd be brilliant. Yeah, this is yeah, so a complete special. That'd be fantastic. Yeah, leave your comments, and um, we always love hearing your feedback. It's always fantastic. And I say this at the end of every webinar, but we really are. We, we, we want to cater these webinars and the talks and the speakers and the topics to really what you're interested in. So give us your feedback. Tell us what you like, what you don't like. Tell us what you want to hear more of. And um, I'll go out and I'll find you know I'll find the speakers for you and I'll find the topic for you. Um, and so yeah, it's, we really want to hear your thoughts. So tell us, yup, this is great. More of this or no, that's crap. Um, so no swearing. Um, but yeah, we 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 love to hear from you. And so yeah, give us your thoughts. And I think that's about it. Um, oh, yeah, Tony, thanks, Mark and Duncan. Uh, June, thanks very much. A really inspiring presentation, June and Floss. Um, and then Tony, yep. And then Stephen, thanks, guys, and thanks to Mark for spending the extra time to answer our questions. No uh, Dominic, thank you, Mark. Uh, Duncan, another great webinar, as always, Duncan. And cheers for the time. Uh, Vula, thanks so much for tonight. See you in Beatport. Brilliant. I love these guys. Thanks so much. Um, we really appreciate your comments. They're fantastic. And um, I'll, I'll, I'll send these over to you as well, Mark. Thanks. Yeah, thanks Thanks all for coming. It's brilliant. Brilliant. Thank you. And uh, yeah, good night. And we will see you next time. Thanks, Mark. See you, everyone. Good night, everyone.